Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. The ministry of prayer, number one, the ministry of the word, scripture. Number two, the ministry of fellowship. Whether fellowship with God and fellowship with the brethren. Corporate fellowship. The community lifestyle. And then number four, service. That means you can know as a believer whether you are growing or not. By checking whether you are actively engaging in these four dimensions. If prayer is not working in your life, you are not growing. If you are not growing in the understanding of scripture you are not growing number three if you have been around for a long time and there is no part of your christian experience that is dedicated towards service then there is a dimension of growth you are not experiencing and finally fellowship we have fellowship with god and with men if you have fellowship with god alone you are still not growing are we together now I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. Why am I teaching you all of these things? Because you see, as you begin to grow spiritually, it's important for you to not just act out of faith alone, but your faith must grow into trust. That means you have come to a point where you know the workings. You should know why you are growing. Are we together now they shouldn't just say why are you growing and you say well i'm in koinonia and they feed me well spiritually that is true but that's not accurate enough you should be able to mentor people that means i should be able to hand over a believer that just got born again and i say sam train this person you shouldn't ask me what should i do it's an insult to your training are we together now if someone is handed over to you now and say please um pastor or prophet or brother or whoever you are mentor this person you should not sit down and then you are just lost and wondering okay what do i do now do you pray no 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 no. you already know the boundaries of growth are prayer the word fellowship and service that's it any other thing outside of these four jurisdictions is a total waste of time it will not contribute to your growth are we together yes so we're dealing with the dimension of fellowship and growth we've looked at luke chapter 9 please write i'll give you four scriptures luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29 the bible says as he prayed jesus now the Bible says the fashion of his countenance changed. Transformation that comes through prayer. Remember, I've taught you here that prayer is primarily a vehicle that attempts to change you. Not just change things, change you. It is the changed you that can now change things. Are we together now? Prayer changes the believer. It changes you by opening your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit. It changes you by pruning flesh in you. It changes you by opening up doors for more of the anointing of the spirit. The Bible says the fashion of his countenance was altered, number one, and his raiment was white. Two things happened. The fashion of his countenance and then his raiment was white and glistering. That's glory there. Are we together now? 1 Corinthians chapter 14 from verse 2 and verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. The Bible says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Now he's speaking, he's talking about uh, praying in tongues, but then it is still prayer. That speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. So you can speak to God, the Bible says. That's fellowship. You speak to God for no man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit. He's praying in his room, he's praying in a church, but the Bible says he's in the spirit. 
and that in that spirit he's speaking mysteries unto God verse 4 he that speaketh in an unknown tongue does what edifieth himself edifieth himself growth you grow it's an architectural word edifice that means that you are growing the foundation has been laid which is Christ now the superstructure is being lifted so that is important for you to understand you neglect prayer you ignore prayer you will not grow you don't grow by inheritance you grow by engaging the forces allocated for the growth of the saints are we together jude 1 jude has only one chapter verse 20 the bible says but ye beloved are we together building up yourselves building what building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying so you build yourself when you pray the first dimension of prayer is as a vehicle and a tool for fellowship and growth building up yourselves on your most holy faith that means look at me if what made you afraid yesterday still makes you afraid today is because your prayer life is not growing are we together the mountain of yesterday that made me cry should not make me cry today again listen let me tell you you know that a believer is growing in the spirit when you get to a point where you can say like the psalmist the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of the same thing cannot continue to buffet you no three years ago you were three hours away from paying your rent and you were perturbed you were you were confused and scattered and disorganized three years later you should have seen god's faithfulness enough and grown spiritually to not allow the same issue make you afraid again are we together yes. you should not fear the same thing twice once is enough growth should take you out of the realm where that kind of fear should come he said do i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil it didn't say there will not be evil it is there but i will not be afraid of it evil does not have to be absent from your life for you to be free of fear i will fear no evil why for thou art with me not for the evil has gone thou art with me thy rod and thy staff Two of them are sticks, but they don't do the same thing. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Praise the Lord. Now, 1 John chapter 1, we'll read from verse 1 to 5. Or maybe just 1 to, um, yeah, let's look at 1 to 5. Apostle John is, remember, Apostle John is God's beloved. That was the man that understood fellowship he was the one who would lean on the chest of jesus to hear well what he was saying john was the one person who showed us the he showed us a glimpse of the power and victory over death theologically speaking he was banished to an isle called patmos on account of his testimony for christ and this man was thrown in boiling oil and he would not fry are we together they brought him out and did not know what to do with him and they banished him in that island and that was where he got the revelation of the book of revelation praise the lord so now every time john is teaching us on fellowship it's important to listen because he truly is the apostle of love and one who understood fellowship did you know that in all of the gospel it was the book of john that taught us on the ministry of the holy spirit extensively all other synoptics did not talk a eh, so much in fact it was matthew just spoke once or twice it was even mark that spoke a little about it luke gave us accounts of it was very detailed but for some reason this guy skipped the holy ghost but not john from 14 down to 16 john was detailing the ministry of the holy spirit 
are we together that which was from the beginning you notice that john always starts from the beginning i like john he teaches from the beginning john 1 verse 1 in the beginning first john 1 verse 1 the beginning again that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life verse 2 we're reading to 5 for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the father was manifest unto us uh-huh three that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that we that ye also may have what fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is you are fellowshipping with us but don't be deceived that we are just flesh our fellowship is with the father this is john speaking now and with his son jesus christ so there is a possibility in the priesthood of the believer to use prayer as an instrument of fellowship with the father and fellowship with the son verse 4 and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full the last verse this is then the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that god is light and in him there is no darkness at all fellowship with the light fellowship with the light fellowship with the light as i engage in the word and as i pray i am in the earth realm but the bible says that fellowship is with the living personality not just scripture fellowship with the father and fellowship with the son hallelujah now look up please many believers think fellowship only starts when visions come many believers think you are not in fellowship when you pray until you see something or hear something or a wind pushes you while you are praying so while people approach prayer for fellowship they continue to be superstitious in their desire they are waiting for gold dust they are waiting for silver dust they are waiting to fall under the anointing they are waiting for just now those things can come those things do come but listen the basis of your confidence is the authority of scripture are we together that it does not matter what happens to my flesh in as much as my understanding interprets it that every time i engage in prayer i am fellowshipping with the father and with the son apostle i finished my prayer i did not feel anything scripture cannot be broken see because if you sit down and you are waiting for visions and experiences and prophecy and word of knowledge alone now let me tell you the truth it is almost impossible for you to have a rich prayer life are we together without one or more of these experiences accompanying intense times of prayer usually they will come they are the things that follow his presence but they are not the basis for believing that he came is someone learning now there are people who have a very strong prophetic inclination they can say in jesus name and they are out of their body it doesn't mean they are prayerful no they are not prayerful it's just that the equipping and the wiring within them towards the prophetic are we together and towards prophetic experiences will give allowance for these interactions so you come now and say in jesus name and while you are praying at a point you get frustrated and stop and say lord show me something now encourage me give me a vision give me a dream there is nowhere in the bible where your growth is tied to your seeing things in scripture no your growth is tied to the degree to which you conform to the image and the character of the christ and your growth is tied to the degree listen carefully to which you understand the mysteries of the kingdom that culminates to your walking in dominion are we blessed but then it's important for you to know that one dimension of prayer is a dimension that provides for fellowship and growth many believers do not understand that there is a dimension for fellowship and growth and it is dangerous if you do not know this 
Because that then means that you cannot position your heart by faith to believe and know that I'm fellowshipping with the Father. Most times people think that the moment we go to pray is all about binding, it's all about casting, are we together? And warfare. While it is true that these are dimensions captured in prayer, they are not the only dimensions. If your prayer life is only full of binding and casting, then you may be casting demons truly, but the richness that comes with that koinonia, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship, fellowship. Hallelujah. Let's hurry up. Number two, the second dimension of prayer. is a dimension of prayer that allows for obtaining promises and making requests take note the first dimension of prayer is for fellowship and growth the second dimension of prayer is obtaining promises and making requests that means that there is a dimension that prayer the role that prayer plays as far as obtaining promises and making requests is concerned hebrews chapter 11 and verse 33 the bible tells us promises can be obtained it can become your own hallelujah who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises not just that they were taught it's a popular word many of you who like to play with hebrew and greek words the word obtained is the word katalambano. It means to not only possess, but to make it your own. Are we together now? Obtain promises. That means it is, an, it is true from scripture, but I make it my experience. Obtain promises. The Bible is full of promises, my brothers and my sisters. Genesis to revelation is full of promises and that in prayer men and women can obtain promises i can take what is written in scripture and make it my experience that means the fact that it is a promise for you does not mean you have it listen 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 this is where i want you to pay attention to both the things i'm saying and the ones i'm not saying because many believers think that just because you find it in scripture and maybe quote it it's yours no sir promises are obtained obtained to become your own and upon mount zion he says there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the sons of jacob shall possess their possession it is their possession but it's not in their hands yet their possession are we together now obtain promises mark chapter 11 23 and 24 is god helping someone tonight 23 and 24 that means the dimension of prayer that is allocated for obtaining promises and making requests you can make requests mark chapter 11 jesus is teaching here verily verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he had saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith. so he's talking about having things making them your physical possession next verse never forget this scripture read with me ready one to read therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire uh-huh when ye pray believe that thou receive them and thou shall have them so you receive and have in prayer you receive and have in prayer you make the truths of scripture your experience when you pray notice what things soever ye desire so it is not wrong to have a desire hello look up please it is not wrong to have a desire now sometimes you would have heard me talk as though i were trivializing the place of prayer to see that the promises of god 
you know, comes to pass in our lives. I'm not trivializing it. I'm only showing the excellency, are we together, of having a passion for the kingdom as being above just needs. I continue to pray and speak that in and through prayer, my needs be met and they are met. Prayer is very important. You can obtain promises and you can grant that requests are granted. Now, let me show you a scripture that will bless you. May it bless you in Jesus' name. John 16 and verse 24. Jesus is teaching John 16 and 24. Ready? Look up. Please read. One, two, read. Hitherto ye have asked nothing in my name. He said, ask, comma, and ye shall receive. Why? That your joy may be full your joy may be there but it's not yet full so there is something prayer does to your results which will help to make your joy perfected when we pray it is one of the ways that we cause joy to be overflowing and full of glory why because in tendering our petitions before god if and when they are granted we are at peace and our joy is complete god does not just want us to have joy he wants joy like life eternal to be to the fullest are we together ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full one last scripture as i studied this scripture blessed me in no small way Apostle James is talking now. James chapter 4 from verse 1 to 3. James chapter 4 from verse 1 to 3. Look at what verse 1 says. Everybody please look up. These apostles were really brilliant people. We think just because they were not educated, they were dull. The Holy Ghost really made them brilliant people. We are the ones who don't understand what they are saying. Look at James. From whence cometh wars and fighting? This is crisis management. Apostle James is saying that in any territory, the issue of war and fighting and bitterness, are we together? And all these evil things against brethren will remain. He's tracing the root cause. Why people fight in church? Why people antagonize one another? Why did Sam buy this shoe? Why did this one buy this? Is she the only one that can make a hair? James is saying there is a root cause to this bitterness this envy are you getting the context now he's saying they come from your lusts that war in your members your desires deep desires next verse verse 2 ye lost and have not that means the reason why most people fight and criticize is the absence of that reality in their own lives james is solving a serious problem here that most times when god blesses others and leaves you the side effect is you will be bitter your bitterness will be routed through different channels through advice through backbiting through a supposed correction but james is speaking by the spirit that most times it is empty people that talk bible we're discussing prayer here are we together don't look at anybody look at me god is talking to us together because i know that when i talk like this there are many people who don't sit down to allow the holy spirit teach them they begin to nod their head in hope that somebody will hear it no no what i say to one i say to all that's scripture let's go back to this it says ye lost and ye have not everybody say have not the absence of results and then it says ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain cannot obtain you do not understand the technology that makes promises become real to you to your life and then he says ye fight we're back to his his um, introduction now and war yet ye have not and he's saying the reason why you have not it's not because your neighbor has it's because you do not know how to ask keep that scripture there don't rush verse 3 look at this very carefully 
It's a healing seminar that James is bringing to the church. James is saying, I have observed you people believers and I found out that the rate of jealousy, the rate of backbiting, the rate of talking around, is saying the truth is that the foundation for all these things is the absence of the results you talk about in your own life. What is there in a crowd? What is there in prosperity? Anointing is not everything. Of course it is not. That when you begin to personalize certain things and create a vendetta around it, the Bible is saying that it's a reflection that you are being paid for the absence of that result. Come. This is my lovely lady. You two come, gentlemen. Two of you come and stand here. Clap for them. You stand. Look up. Do you know for just asking this lady to come and stand here and asking this guy to stand here, if you are not careful, you are angry already. Now, wait. It, I'm not saying you are wicked. Look up, look up, look up, look up. Yes. I'm, I'm teaching us something here. This is prayer. Wait, this is a prayer seminar. Now, watch this. I asked her to come and stand here. Notice you started looking at her from head to toe. What is special about her? The apostle called. Now, it's not because you are evil. It's because there is a desire that the highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved, the need to feel respected, the need to feel appreciated. So when somebody is now experiencing something you crave for, except God helps you, that pain will be there. James is solving that problem now. Come out and stand. The lady is happy her thing. But notice you are, she does not know you. You don't know her. But notice if I say you too, come and join her. You suddenly stop hating her. So it was never about hating her. It's wanting to also participate. Politicians criticize people and fight them. And they sit in a round table and say, you know what? This thing, we're going to run an all-inclusive government. You will also eat from it. Quietly, the whole case is closed. I called this lady and I did not call this guy. And he's frowning and looking at me. Now, listen, she will attack this lady in many ways. Number one, don't distract apostle, he's preaching. While what he may say is true, it is not about distraction. Distraction is just the scapegoat to help you vent a pain that has nothing to do with the subject matter. Notice, anything I do to this lady now will offend you. If I bring out, I have some money, I hope you are not angry still. <laughs> Carnality in the house of God. Watch this. How much is this? Lost the Bible has already warned that he that loves the world, the love of the Father. Now, look up, please. You see, this lady, she was sitting quietly. She probably did not have a vision that she would receive this amount of money. And now, remember, you prayed in your room and say, Oh God, <laughs> listen, I'm teaching you something. Look up, look up, look up. We are still in a prayer seminar. I'm showing you. Listen. You see, you shall know the truth. It's not the truth that is dear that sets free. It's the truth that is known. Remember, this is not an issue of hatred. Even you, you are surprised that as loving as you are, you hate someone else. It's not that you hate someone else. It's the reaction that happens to all flesh. That's why the Bible says all flesh will pray. Prayer is a system that helps you to also obtain. Watch this. You prayed in your room. Oh God, let my destiny helper be in Koinonia today. Because this, I need support. And God is acting as if he didn't hear you. And someone who is sitting in front. Now watch this. The various ways you can attack this lady is as follows. One, is it not just because worship team is sitting in front? I came early and they took me at the back. It, now, remember, it's not the issue of worship team. The foundation, the wall is this. 
because you believe that if it was you you would have been the person to get it are we together so god gives us uh, hold this 500 dollar, my dear and god gives this guy hold it now watch this they are holding money and this money is your desire this money is your prayer point in fact quite honestly you have a more legitimate need of this money than them it is more painful if they already have money in their pocket i'm using money for a reason are we together now now look at this my darling baby coming to the front some of you can even be angry with this small girl why is she distracting koinonia it's not so much about her it's about you are, are, are we falling now let me ask this lady now and say go and sit down my dear after service see me and let me give you one big hug from this night her shoe was not put correctly from this night her watch was supposed to be at the other side of the hand from this night why did you tie your hair and, and do it like this why did you do uh, this way left or right now notice those variations of pain is not really about her it is about your not obtaining now watch this if i say ushers bring the basket and they bring a basket here and they start to share one one thousand naira you are now colleagues in greatness do you have your own yes do you have your own let's praise the lord together and listen james is saying that is one way to have peace Thank you. God bless you. Watch this. Are, are, we, are, are you getting the point now? You see a rich man pass and say, look at corrupt, wicked Nigerians. Corruption is bad in this country. You are right. But the motivation has nothing to You don't even know whether that person is God that raised a destiny helper to bless him. All this anointing, be careful, oh young men like this it takes time as far as i know it takes time for the anointing to come and these people are too young to carry this kind of anointing i will not say anything against anybody but just be aware you see those kinds of things are statements they are not about listen when you learn this when people try to talk about you you don't be angry you too you understand that james has given you intelligence that these people are struggling too your result has a side effect on your audience we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less we know we know there's more that's found in you and we will never get We know, we know there's more that's found in you. Verse 3 now. Ye ask. Now look, look at this. All other places in scripture just tell us why we don't have. They say we ask. But James broke it down that there are times you can ask and you will still not receive. So that means there are times you did it correctly and yet you did not get results. And he's telling you why. That every time you ask and you do not receive, it could be because you ask and miss. Leave all that English. We are going to deal with it. And he says that the motivation is that you will consume it upon your lust. Please give us Amplified. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know. We know. There's more that's found in you. Now read it. Ready? One, two, read, Koinonia. Or you do ask God for them and yet fail to receive because you ask with wrong purpose and evil, selfish motives. Your intention is when you get what you desire to spend it in sensual pleasures. So the Bible says, answered prayer 
is not only based on the faith of the believer, but based on God's vetting of what that answer will do with respect to his kingdom. That it is possible to act correctly, but in God's intelligence, he sees that granting you that answer will not make for kingdom come. You can lose it. It's not a faith problem. It's a motif problem. In the school of prayer, it's not only faith that is important. Your motif. Oh God, give me power. Your faith is correct. You are fasting. You are praying. But heaven will not just come to say give him power. They will vet your motifs. Why did you want the power? Why do you still desire it? Lord, give me wealth. Lord, give me influence. Give me a child. Give me a wife. Give me a husband. And God is looking at your desire. Listen, you ask and you have not. And the Bible says because you ask amiss. Amiss means that your motif has already been corrupted. Are you seeing where the dissipation of energy in prayer for many people is not equal to the results they obtain they pray for one year they fast for 40 days and from the first day of that prayer their motive was already wrong lord give me a song you stroll to the bush with a guitar and shout and sing and you don't hear anything why because you said the last time i went somewhere they laughed at me. I need to let them know I'm not an anyhow person. That motif already, God says no. If you want a song, so that your songs will be a ladder for nations to hear and to cause the fire of revival to come, you will not pray for 40 days, I guarantee you. Make reference to my teaching for your glory, please. Part one and two, I think, the media would give it to you. You can go to our, our download portal, koinoniadownload.org, and then search for it there and get it. For your glory. One secret in my life, and I will not lie to you, I stand by the God of heaven, is that most of my desires and my requests are never about, I am not the final bus stop to everything I ask God everything I ask God to give me or do in my life I am an usher eventually he's the final bus stop Lord give me a child why because I'm a woman no give me a child why because Penina is laughing at me no give me a child why because I've been barren for 10 years no Lord give me a child why an opportunity to be able to bring a priest on the earth god says now you are talking now you are talking lord increase my prayer group why because my brother's prayer group is expanding and god says nonsense there are more important things to be done lord increase my prayer group why because people think that i'm not anointed lord increase my church why so that I can show people that even from this village, the whole world can see Jesus. No, it looks like it's a nice prayer point. Lord, I just want people to see you in and through my life. And he says, who is this calling me? There is a language that God cannot resist. Thy kingdom come does not mean to say thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom comes means your life is like a funnel. It channels everything into christ prosperity lift him for the sake of thy house i desire thy prosperity lord increase my prayer life increase my wealth increase my influence hallelujah praise the lord are we blessed your intention and your motives so there is prayer that causes people to not receive because they ask amiss and from amplified we see that amiss means wrong motives it means prayer that is born out of selfishness it means prayer that
that has an unrighteous agenda. This leads us to a very interesting, um, would I say subtopic that I'll just touch a little and then we'll move to something else. The will of God. Write it down. Prayer is only answered according to scripture when that prayer is within the boundary of the will of God. Please listen to me very carefully. That just because you are praying and you are making petitions, remember we are looking at part two, the second dimension of prayer, that in obtaining promises and in making your petitions, the boundary of your answered prayer is the will of God. Very important. John chapter 9, verse 31, the B part. And then we'll go to Ephesians chapter 5. We'll start from 15 to 17. John chapter 9. God is helping us tonight. John chapter 9. Now look up please. The Bible says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Him he heareth. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15 to 17. Ephesians 5. See then that ye walk circumspectly. The word there is accurately. Not as fools but as wise. 16. Redeeming the time. Why? Because the days are evil. Next verse. Let's read together. Being ye not unwise but understanding what the will is of the lord is watch this that means my petitions and my requests are guaranteed to receive an answer when number one they are from a motive that is not fleshly and carnal number two when they are within the coordinates of the word of god and the will of god if i pray a prayer outside of the will of god it will not be answered are we together come again please come thank you watch this let me use my two lovely people let's assume in this example that this is a husband and his dear wife and i'm a prayer warrior what am i and i go to god in prayer and say lord in the name of jesus christ i don't think that this marriage is correct this is my wife and in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this man, something must happen between these two people to give me what belongs to me. Now, the Bible says, what the Lord has joined, let no man put asunder. Is that true? And you see that this kind of prayer, number one, the motive is selfish. I'm not thinking about what this man will feel. I'm not thinking about what this woman will feel. I'm not even thinking about what the children will feel. I'm so passionate about my desire to hell with whatever happens to them that kind of prayer is a wasted prayer no matter what is added on top fasting praying seat number two i am praying a prayer that is outside of the will of god now it is true that under certain circumstances you know it can be irreconcilable and these people may get married again and move on like it happened to ruth and naomi with boaz are we together now there are conditions that legitimize marriage again but we are talking in this context a healthy marriage and you are coming now to pray that God will make somebody to live and come to you is number one a selfish prayer it will not be answered there is no kingdom come in that prayer are we together and then number two watch this now it is outside of the will of God this is not how God joins people in holy matrimony it is against his character so it's a wasted prayer no matter who supports you in that prayer number two Praying a prayer that your father should die so that you will get his inheritance is a stupid prayer. It's not only an ungodly prayer. Are we together? Yes. It is true that if your father passes on to glory, of course, you know, a good man liveth an inheritance. But a man who is alive, are we together? And you are alive too. Two of you are alive. And you are saying, God, kill one person. And allow one person to be alive so that I will get the money. It's a wicked prayer. That, that's why James said you kill. Not by using a knife. 
that is that is murder that kind of prayer lord this our father let him go now so that we will rest because you see we do many things in the body of christ that we call prayer god is purifying this experience of prayer is the reason why our prayer lives are unfruitful and it's the reason why when we mentor so many people in the prayer ministry we find out that their lives are ineffective because most prayer points are a derivative of lust. It's amazing the nonsense people pray. Only God knows how many things I lay hands on here. Every end of the month. And in as much as I prophesy that whatever is here, God will, must answer. He is going to vet it. There are angels who will check. Yes, this is kingdom come. This is kingdom come. Nonsense. This is kingdom come. This is kingdom come. God is not God is not a fool you don't write nonsense and drop it here and then you expect that just because an anointing came upon it no not every dead body came back to life when they touched it you kill because you want to satisfy your lust koinonia let me teach you something please listen to me one of the things that you must pray for not just in prayer alone is oh god kill self in me i don't know how to kneel down and cry you will miss too many things in destiny when your life is all about you and myself hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done Hello, him at o thy kingdom come, thy will be. Hello, him at o thy kingdom come, thy will be. Hello, him at o hello, him at o thy will be. Hello, him at o Make sure that your Christian experience is completely void of self. What is selfishness? The obsession for a thing, a realm, a result, regardless of the effect on the well-being of others. To hell with anybody if I want it. I don't care who dies. I don't care what happens. That's their cup of tea. It is me. It's a dangerous way to live. You will never be a winner that way. Your door remains open for the assaults of darkness when it is all about you and what I want. If it be thy will, <clears throat> nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is selfishness that produces thieves. When you are stealing a man's phone, in your mind, for instance, you are not thinking, this person now, what of the contacts in his phone? Could it be that he's waiting for an alert for a job that will help his family? Could it be the first out of 20 people in the family? You don't care. All I know is phones. Look at the people who steal phones, for instance, not just around here, all around the nation. They can literally carry maybe a knife or an axe or something. Harm somebody, the kind of injury that 200,000 will not solve. And carry a phone of 50,000 and sell it for 6,000. That is the epitome of self. What of people who their loved ones die? And then they collect inheritance. And uncles and aunties say, come and sit down here. I am your father's elder brother, your mother's younger brother. Bring all the money. And then they take peanuts and give the family and sit on their inheritance. Self. What will make a politician carry scholarship for students? Students that some of them are the only ones sponsoring themselves. And he will carry their entire scholarship and put it at the back of his pocket and live with it. Self. The foundation of wickedness 
is selfishness the foundation of wickedness is self-centeredness that is why the apex the zenith of love is surrender and sacrifice are you learning this now so the bible says to know the will of god thank you thank you my dear let's talk a bit about the will of god now i've done a few teachings about the will of god we are still discussing the second point dimension of prayer the concept of the will of god must be understood for your prayer to be accurate and to be rich the will of god means many things for many people I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm about to tell you. I've listened to different teachings about the will of God and I've explored, I've studied the Bible myself and I've found out that many things people teach as relating the will of God is wrong. It's wrong. Two scriptures, Colossians 1 verse 9, please. It's an anthem here every time we continue. For this cause we also, Paul is speaking, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to do what? So he's talking of prayer here. Pray for you. And to desire that ye be filled with, number one, the knowledge of his will. And then in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So a man can be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, the last verse, and then I teach a bit on the will of God. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Ready? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. What is the will of God? The answer was clearly stated in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. What is the will of God? Matthew chapter 6 and 10. Everybody read it. One to read. Thy kingdom come. It's not supposed to be a full stop there. It's actually supposed to be a comma. Thy kingdom come by thy will being done in the earth as it is in the heavens so what is the will of god the will of god represents every action that causes the kingdom to come and causes christ to be glorified that is the will of god please understand this in the simplest term the will of god is not just what is right because the concept of rightness is relative in our world the will of god is any activity and any action let me define it very well. Number one, inspired of the spirit. Number two, consistent with scripture. Number three, that is able to cause the kingdom, the influence of Christ to come and that Christ be glorified. Whatever activity that revolves within that circumference can be called the will of God. Please understand this. The will of God, number one, inspired of the spirit number two consistent with the character of scripture number three is able to cause the influence of heaven to be revealed in a life and within a territory and number four it ultimately glorifies christ whatever does not subscribe to these terms cannot should never be called the will of god this is a very powerful teaching Are we together the will of god this is the answer whatever has the opportunity to cause the kingdom to come and to cause christ to be glorified and i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men the will of god now watch this most of the main teachings have taught about the good will of God, the acceptable, the perfect will of God, and so on and so forth. And those things are there, but I, I do not think that those are, I believe, this is my opinion, and I, I believe it's consistent from Scripture, 
that there are only two dimensions to the will of God. Number one, I call it the revealed will of God. Number two, I call it the permissible will of God. That's all there is. And let me, let me define it very quickly. I hope you are not confused in this lecture. Remember, we are still on point two. Are we together? The second dimension of prayer. But now it has necessitated doing a quick course on understanding the will of God. The revealed will of God. Write this down, please. The revealed will of God is the will of God as revealed primarily from scripture. Full stop. The will of God as, as known to man primarily from scripture. There is a reason why I say that. Please follow carefully. God will give us intelligence now. That the revealed will of God represents the dimension of God's will that has been made known to man primarily from scripture. Notice, I didn't say only from scripture, but primarily from scripture. There are other auxiliary support systems of obtaining the revealed will of God. One is prophecy. One is visions. One dreams. Are we together? But the degree of error and inaccuracy in all these other methods is the reason why they all submit to scripture. I have taught this. That the prophecy of scripture is the highest, the noblest and most accurate of all prophecies. Word of knowledge, prophecy, like the dispensing of that gift or that office and all other spiritual media for obtaining the will of God they walk but they have a very high degree of error and the errors are caused by many things there is the error of perception there is the error of reception there is the error of interpretation are we together now there is the error that comes as a result of the low level of renewal in the interpreter all of these things together are a mix and they corrupt the purity of the voice of God through all those channels you are safest when you understand and discern the will of God as revealed from scripture I believe strongly that scripture was written so that it will not be changed if scripture was only recorded in a radio it would have been changed by now scripture was written it is written you hardly change what is written Are we together that means when I want to explore the will of God for his program for my life my first area of search is not a dream look up please my first area of search is not Apostle Joshua Selman to prophesy to you my first area of search is scripture and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture that is able to do what to make you wise unto salvation. It is very important. Let me give you an example. Oh boy. An example of the revealed will of God. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. Everyone please read. Ready? One, two, read. Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? It is God's desire. This is a revealed will of God. There is no need asking, Oh God, do you want my father to be saved? Oh God, do you want my mother to be saved? Your prayer is, Lord, give me the strategy for the salvation. Not whether he will be saved or not. Asking God whether someone should be saved is not correct because scripture has already opened his will number two asking whether it is God's desire for the saints to do well is not a will that is hidden are we together now yes Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the thoughts that I think towards you say yet the Lord thoughts of peace or good and not of evil to bring you an expected end there is the will of God as revealed from scripture. This is very important as we prepare to go to the third dimension because you see, 
until you know what the will of God is you will not be able to make certain requests there are things we do as a ministry there are privileges we give to workers there are privileges we give to leaders are we together now it is it is something that has been put on ground the workers the leaders know and based on that knowledge it's not a mystery if they are if the workers are not sure they can go to their heads of department and their executives who help to interpret what has been put down by the ministry as far as their welfare and their provision is concerned are we together now yes for instance in this ministry whatever program we are doing as workers or whatever the moment it is night it is mandatory that under normal circumstances vehicles are around to help alleviate the stress of moving in darkness it's not something that is a special arrangement it is so after this service now there are buses that will be waiting to pick people are we together now now asking apostle do you think that there will be a boss after this service it's unnecessary because that will has been revealed are you getting what i'm saying now the scripture already has the most accurate dimension of god's will his will as revealed in scripture and then demonstrated in christ now listen carefully the bible calls jesus the image of the invisible god and i've taught you here that jesus came as a correction of the perceptions we had about god there were many things we did not know about god there were many things we knew but not properly about god so we look at the life of jesus in his earth work and we learn god by looking at jesus there's no need asking whether god is a god of love we see it in jesus we see how he treated sinners and publicans we see how he treated children we see how he wept at people's funerals so we know that god is love because jesus is was and continues to be loved are we together now god is a giver how do i know that five loaves four loaves little children have you any catch cast your net to the right side his life was full of giving till he gave his life so i know god is a giver so when the bible says he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him i trust god because i see that truth of scripture revealed in jesus i know that god is slow to anger and judgment why because jesus was walking with some disciples and they saw some other people and said can we command fire to fall and jesus said do you not know what spirit you are of the lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love jesus became a demonstration of that so nobody will come and talk nonsense and tell you how oh, god will kill you tomorrow throw away all that garbage jesus greater than any prophet is a representation of the fact that god is slow to anger let god be true and every man a liar are we together now it is the reason why we edit prophecies based on scripture and based on jesus the christ looking up to jesus he can be looked up to he is the author and the finisher of our faith that means our journey is with reference to the standard he gave us there is nowhere in all the 33 and a half years of jesus that i see him intentionally plotting evil against any so god does not think evil because as seen in the christ it was not there it is true that he judges but god is slow to anger so away with that theology that makes it look like god is chasing every man just to destroy you it's not supposed to be a license for licentiousness don't get me wrong but that it is consoling to know that we are wrapped up in the love of the father behold what manner of love the father had bestowed when jesus saw people who were who who were crying in funerals he joined them to weep we do not have a high priest who had not been touched with the feelings 
of our infirmity. You know why I teach you this? Because the days that are coming are coming with too much spirituality and spiritism. If you are not grounded on scripture, many things will confuse you. You will soon not know who God is again because there are pseudo actions that look spiritual but they are not consistent with the Christ. Look up to Jesus, not Apostle Joshua Selman. Look up to Jesus, not a preacher. Paul only said, follow me as I follow Christ. Before you follow me, see who I'm following. Are we together? Let me tell you this. The revelation of God's love in my life has done something to me. When I say God loves me, I really mean it. It's not because of the results. He loves me. I have an understanding with God. Not only see my father. This is not about covenant of ministry and this. God loves me. I hear the chains falling. That's what is happening tonight. Chains from all kinds of teachings. Well-meaning but destructive. The will of God is that all men be saved and all men come into the knowledge of him. It is the reason why in this ministry, for instance, we do not fight our wounded soldiers. We stand for them. If people do things and go down, we are quick to come. You see me preach and it looks like I'm always holding a cane. Yes, I'm holding a cane, but remember thy rod and thy staff. I told you they don't do the same thing. Rod is for correction staff is to draw you you need both if you are a preacher and you have only staff you will see the kind of members you produce if you have only a rod you also see the kind of members you produce to totally comfort people you need the rod and the staff hallelujah i love people if you are not growing in love you do not know god and the love of Christ is not at work in you. It doesn't matter what village you come from. We have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. Are we together? We have been grafted into that life of love. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. Not when you heal the sick. Not when you preach. Love. I hear the chains falling. Let fear live your life. I hear the chains falling. You cannot serve God in fear. You serve God in reverence. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. One of the most beautiful times in Koinonia here is when we are done with the service and I have to hug my children. You see all of them come over me. That thing gives me a feeling that I cannot begin to describe. No matter how you look at me and no matter what you are holding, I turn to my children and give them a big hug. They come with their, their wet shirt from fighting over juice and soap. I still hug them like that. I love them. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed. The love of God is a very powerful revelation. Many people have exaggerated it. And their lives continue to be shredded into nonsense. They allow the devil to just come. And people have exaggerated the love of the Father to the point that they have covered the issue of hellfire. Hell is still there. Listen to my message last week. Hell is there. Hell is real. Lake of fire is even worse than hell. Many people talk about hell and leave lake of fire. Hell is a spirit hell itself will be relocated to the lake of fire those who are in hell now have not officially started their judgment the judgment will officially start when death hell the grave will be relocated into the lake of fire we don't know who is there but one thing we know is that there are spirits who are there bound in everlasting chains what i just told you is also love Use this as a father and see how correct your children will be. When I was in secondary school, before they flog you, they would tell you what you did wrong. You will accept that I did wrong. They will pray for you, then they will flog you. 
Let's start Koinonia Secondary Schools. You will see how we we'll train these children. I'm not going to bring this secular, demonic, Babylonian training. Imagine that you flog your child and he knows what he did wrong. Just because you prayed for him does not mean you should not whip him. Foolishness is bound in the, the heart of a child. The rod of correction, not prayer, will drive it far from him. There is a psychological testimony that your child needs. I'm only serving what the chef prepared this night. <laughs> Remember I told you that I'm only a waiter. The principal chef is the Holy Spirit. And his meals are always balanced and nourishing. Say amen. amen. So there is the revealed will of God. Number two, there is the permissible will of God. Let me talk about that very quickly. What is the permissible will of God? Now look up please. I will say it, then I will repeat it as you write. The permissible will of God represents actions that are within the boundary of righteousness, God's character, and that directly exalt the Christ. The permissible will of God represents actions that are within the boundary of righteousness, comma, God's character comma and directly exalt christ now just because it is permissible does not mean it is necessarily not the will of god permissible there does not mean god is managing it look up please there are things in scripture that are not written verbatim there is nowhere in scripture that is written that you will be in zaria now there is nowhere in scripture that is written that you have five children. Now, please look up. There are dimensions of God's will that are not stated directly from scripture. At that point, we use the tools of righteousness. We use the tools of God's character. And we use the tools of the exaltation of Christ as the compass to help us to be able to walk around that will. These three first then in addition prophecies visions and the rest come notice the bible says the kingdom of god is in talk to me righteousness peace and joy never in visions never in prophecy no the kingdom of god is in righteousness that means god's methodology peace joy in the holy ghost now let me tell you this this is the major area where as believers we have suffered a great deal again and again this dimension of understanding the permissible will of God Sam has a program in two weeks return to worship now whether or not you had a vision or a dream or God just put it in your heart the truth is that that program if it is done in righteousness are we together if it is done consistent with christ's character and if it will end up glorifying christ it is the will of god that will support the kingdom as powerful as the will revealed in scripture are you getting me now this is where all the other auxiliary things like finding who to marry a job to do there is nowhere in scripture where it is written that pastor alpha marry annie but within the boundary of righteousness if you marry a non-believer it was not the will of god are we together now but that within the boundary of the will of god you can find a sister that loves god and her life is consistent what is virtue virtue is a reflection of the, your closeness to the character of christ so I don't need to see a demonic sister or a devilish brother and ask, is that God's will? No. In Koinonia here, for instance, if you come and meet me and you tell me this girl that you use, for example, you like her, for instance, it can be within the boundary of the will of God. If you are a well-behaved brother and you are responsible, are we together? 
it's my responsibility to vet you based on the will of god righteousness responsibility love and i can tell you with all the blessings of god and god will stamp it and endorse it are we together there are very few people on earth who because of their lives listen carefully and because of the nature of what they do for the kingdom god will meticulously place restrictions around everything in their life because the role that they play someone like me now you see almost everything about my life is meticulously guided do you know why the reason is because i carry a burden of a generation and the implication of everything i do is generational but that is not that cannot be a template for you it is the price i have to pay for carrying this anointing there is a maximum number of cars god has told me i may never have it if at all it comes and it's more than that you see god has searched my life and he has he has optimized the things that must be in my life for me to be effective that functioning at your optimal level will require this there are people who functioning at their optimal level will require that they are millionaires not billionaires some it will even require that they are not millionaires at all but it cannot be a template for everybody the scripture come this brother now can be trusting god for a job lord should i go to enugu or should i go to lagos it is not written here directly the only thing is that the path of the justice has a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day so these are foundations i can take out time if this brother is giving a job right now he needs to look at that job does this job compromise on my work with god are we together will this help me to be responsible if it does then within that this gentleman can safely go on that job now if for any reason that decision he has taken is against destiny god will go out of his way god does not only lead by saying start he leads by saying stop there are times you don't wait for him to say start you move if he keeps quiet he's endorsing you if he says stop you return i'm, I'm showing you certain things about the will of god oh god should i build a house god is a god of portions it's never his will for me to be a tenant for life so if some money comes wisdom that is profitable <laughs> wisdom that is profitable to direct should tell me buy land and start building if it is not the will of god god will show me are we together our precious men here have married good and lovely sisters not all of them saw visions some of them just directly in the name of honesty they saw a sister who loved god they came to me and i said god bless you you may be waiting forever For a dream a vision some occult type encounter no listen I'm, I'm telling i'm using this as a point of contact listen my brother let me tell you i'm saying it is not a you can sit down and trust god look at a godly sister god already gave you what virtue is virtue is not just the ability to cook virtue is your closeness to the character of christ find a godly sister that looks like that when a job 29 man marries a proverbs 31 woman they would give birth to a psalm 112 home are we together there are people today who god already answered them and gave them good jobs but not understanding the concept of the will of god they are waiting for a vision 
NMPC gave you a job, you rejected it because God called you into ministry. I'm not saying it's wrong. Good, good things came to you and you threw it away and God said, I've tried for you. And you are there now wallowing around and being punished for not discerning the will of God. Say in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to see, to hear, and to discern the will of God. You are with a, a man who is smoking and drinking and ungodly and you said I will change him. You are not in the will of God. Let me just tell you straight up this night. The ministry of transformation is exclusively the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Any man that does not change before marrying you will seldom change. He will remain that way. And any man who changes just because he wants to marry you has not changed. Whatever a man does to only you, he's not really, is not a virtue in him. If he's kind to only you, he's not kind. If he's truly kind, he will be kind to everybody. Kindness will so implicate him, even if he tries to lie, to come out. A lady who washes only your plates is not neat. The virtue of thoroughness and excellence must spill out in every area. I hear the chains falling. Yeah. I hear the chains falling. When God brings a destiny helper that is blessed, you don't fight him because you have been taught that all blessings come from God through men to men and if the men don't have what you are looking for you will not have it so it does not make you to look down on others but you pay attention when joseph of arimathea is coming you pay attention when pharaoh is coming oh joseph pay attention when boaz is coming ruth pay attention when ahasuerus is calling for women esther pay attention it's how god lifts men god lifts men by bringing those greater than you to lift you it's a technology it's not hidden how does God increase a ministry by anointing them and putting the word so that they minister to people and the people that are built by that word will communicate benevolence the offering you gave is not going to heaven the offering you gave is what will pay boss tomorrow by sounds so it's not a mystery the more I continue to be anointed and I bless you and dispense spiritual value the more this ministry will continue to increase and I will also increase there's no gimmick about it so if you are poor and your pews are empty the problem is the value not just demons the knowledge of God's will will help us to stop talking a lot of nonsense Bishop Oyedeko says every man's calling is a high calling nobody has a low calling everybody's calling is a high calling so if you are failing in your life take responsibility don't say God made me to be small sit down and say why is my life not moving forward this cannot be the will of god for me to keep begging every day as a man moving from pillar to post i am a prayer warrior but in addition i should be blessed to be a blessing genesis 12 verse 2 and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed hallelujah are we together if you get married four months five months your wife refuses to get pregnant don't sit down asking nonsense and say whether that is god's will be fruitful genesis 1 26 be fruitful is his written will the priest that blessed you on behalf of god prophesied to you immediately you should know something is wrong listen obey scripture if you are wrong let god take responsibility are we together a job that makes you compromise on your spiritual life a job that takes down your prayer life a job 
that cuts you away from the community of believers that can build you you don't need a vision get out of that job immediately i don't care how much you are being paid what shall it profit a man he's talking profit if he gains the whole world and loses his soul i repeat get out of that job get out of that job don't sit down asking should i go pack your load and leave are we together yes you are in a church for instance that is full of manipulation and full of all kinds of things and you see that the character of what is done is not in accordance to scripture there is no integrity there is no godliness there is no feeding of the word of god there is the responsibility of a shepherd as designed by scripture any man who is not doing it is not a shepherd period i will give you pastors after my heart You sit down and you every week everything from you is going you pack your load and get out of that place there is no need praying and say lord should i stay there no are we together the will of god so when i'm praying back to what we're teaching when i'm praying my awareness of the will of god so he's praying father apostle use this lady for example and i just found out that i like her what is wrong with it i'm not saying i'm not saying she's your your your, your, your wife but if god joins two of you we're happy we join you what what that, that's i mean listen god never told ruth boaz is her husband boaz hunger took ruth and naomi they knew they were about to die. She went to a field to clean her thing. Boaz saw her, a benevolent man. No strings attached. All marital processes start with a purified motif. That is an expression of who you truly are. He said, I don't know who this young girl is, but leave something for her. Let her be able to take it back to her mother. And God said, that's right. Remember, God is looking for those who will create the lineage that Jesus will be part of. So he would not handle anything with laxity because Jesus is about to come through that tribe. Are we together? If you come and meet me as a brother and say, Apostle, God is showing me a particular lady. I'll say, let me stand representing what the parents will tell you. Straight up, I'm not even going to waste your time. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Congratulations. Are you a responsible gentleman? Yes. Prove it. There are two kinds of responsibility. There's psychological responsibility where you are getting the mindset that will help you to be serious. Two, there is structural responsibility where now you are beginning to produce food. Even if you don't have structural responsibility and you have a mindset that wins based on the word of God, we can stand to say, no, the way you are going, what is in your mind will eventually come. Are you seeing that? But you are not responsible you are not under authority you are a careless person you live your life your relationship is like occult nobody is going to give you any daughter at least not not any of my ladies here and you ladies we have created a template to help you if you like don't follow a path that god has created for your redemption and and follow cunningly devised fables until it lands you in trouble see the the, the house of god is supposed to be a place of guidance I don't need to go to the Bible to find out whether it's the will of God for me to go back home this night. As soon as service is done and I'm done, I go back home. Why? Going back home subscribes to the law of responsibility. That every good man should have a home and should go back home and sleep at home. Are we together? Even the madman tried to stay in a place. It's the demons that made him restless. He tried. So men who don't stay at home they are not responsible it's a revelation i hear the chains falling yeah. I hear the chains falling. let's tie up this thing so the permissible will of god please look up please 
the permissible will of God actions that are within the boundary of righteousness if you have to cheat your brother to increase you cannot say it's the will of God you cannot call that favor if you have to bring people down to rise that is not favor if you have to kill to rise that is not favor if you have to bring 250,000 before you get a job hello that is not favor let me tell you the truth no sir it is not favor knowing what the will of God is so the first dimension of prayer is fellowship and growth the second dimension is obtaining promises and making requests all of this that we have been discussing are still under that thank you thank you so much the revealed will of god the permissible will of god the third dimension of prayer that we we'll discuss very quickly our time is gone is the dimension that makes for decrees and spiritual legislation decrees and spiritual legislation i've taught you three dimensions of prayer number one the dimension for fellowship and growth number two obtaining promises obtaining promises and i told you that to obtain promises you must number one have a heart that is selfless number two you must ensure that your request is within the boundary of the will of god then you can ask confidently this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything in his name he heareth us are we together and then number three the dimension of decrease and spiritual legislation now please pay attention this is the dimension of prayer that does not so much deal with talking to god this is the dimension of prayer that deals with rearranging realities based on the word of God. Please understand. This is the dimension of prayer that is concerned with not only talking to God, but talking to things, talking to circumstances, talking to time, talking to demons, talking to elements of creation to line up with the will of God that's why I took out time to talk to you about the will of God because if you do not know the will of God and the provisions of scripture decree and spiritual legislation will not be possible with you what then do we say to these things I know what God has made for me I know what God says should be in my life this is also the realm of prayer where words listen now become like arrows in a man's quiver words are instruments of creation the following scripture ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4 please write down these scriptures these are the scriptures that we must have in our minds when we want to engage prayer as a system for making decrees and legislating spiritual realities ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4 the a part says where the word of a king is talk to me there is power where the word of a king is and then revelation chapter 5 verse 10 just write it don't give us media just write it down the bible says we have been made unto our god kings and priests or a kingdom of priests and we shall reign not in heaven in the earth so i know under god that in christ my words are not ordinary my words are powerful please listen everybody overflow one two three online listen carefully 
this part of this teaching concerns you seriously number two proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21 i'm giving you a few scriptures that guide you when making decrees and establishing realities in the spirit proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21 death and life help us media we have to rush are in the power of the tongue death and life are not in the nozzle of a gun death and life are not in the stone of a catapult death and life are not in the edge of the sword the bible says they are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof i use words to program life i use words to program death i can program life over territories i can program death over territories number three job chapter 22 and 28 popular scripture write it down please job 22 28 thou shall also decree everybody say decree to decree means to pass as law thou shall decree a thing and it shall be established not unto everybody unto the one that decreed it thou shall decree a thing thou shall decree life thou shall decree increase thou shall decree victory let the redeemed of the lord say so god has already brought them as the redeemed let them say so are we together the word of a king thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established and the light shall shine upon your ways number three isaiah 43 and verse 26 isaiah 43 and verse 26 read it please ready one two read put me in remembrance let us plead together Declare thou that thou mightest be, in other words, bail yourself out of that situation. Bail yourself. Declare yourself acquitted. Come out of that situation by making decrees in prayer. This family, nobody rises. In the name of Jesus, I decree, I declare that the horns that keep men down, I am exempted. The Bible says you are, you are already breaking the chains. You are, you are exempting yourself. Listen, let me tell you. If you do not declare to be justified, then whatever you see, you take it like that. Scripture. Declare thou. Declare what? Declare thou health, declare thou long life, declare thou prosperity, declare thou increase. This is not just some name it, claim it thing. It's, a, it's an ordinance of the kingdom. It is how we function in this kingdom. God is called in Genesis 1, 2, 3, the talking spirit. The spirit that moves by talking. Listen, please do not ever get to a point in your life we are making decrees with understanding looks like a basic spiritual thing you are silent your destiny is silent you are silent every door remains closed declare thou that thou mightest be justified i declare over my life sometimes i stand in front of the mirror and i speak joshua selma you will never go down you go up and up and up the light of god is upon you the favor of god is upon you it's not every time that i pray that i'm praying for you there are times i'm praying for myself too there are times i'm praying for my own destiny even when i pray for you i pray with intelligence i know what the word of god says father this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness i declare your people are prospering they are understanding their minds are enlarged listen it's not every time you talk to god no, there are times that you stand like Ezekiel and speak to the bones. Can these bones live? Only thou knowest. 
and he says prophesy prophesy he spoke to the bones and there was a sound and it came and all the bones came together but there was no light and he says son of man he says prophesy to the four winds and say thou wind breathe upon the slain and the breath entered them and they became an exceeding great army Isaiah 41 21 the Lord showed me this scripture in 2004 and it changed my life one two please read produce your cause say at the Lord bring forth your strong reasons say at the king of Jacob this is like a law court and you are bringing the basis for why such and such and such should happen to you why should I lift your family why should I promote you bring forth your strong reasons see let me tell you this many people are prayerful but they are wordless is why the prayer is not effective we pray in tongues important we pray to God and we ask prayers but most of our prayers are outside of the jurisdiction and the methodologies of the word it is important see this is the missing link this is where the disciples missed it they were praying amiss you can be prayerful and not get results because you are praying amiss fortified by the word the first dimension of Jesus's growth as revealed in scripture is getting the word first then we see him praying we did not have the opportunity to hear what he was saying in his 40 days prayer but at least we heard what he said in Gethsemane so we know that his prayer was consistent with scripture if it be thy will produce your strong reasons listen believers your prayer life is going to be rich in this end time to the degree to which you understand these dimensions as i approach the throne of grace to pray i know that my prayer life is not all about petitions there is a dimension of it that is tailored for fellowship let me tell you this many times the determinant of what dimension you switch to is often the holy ghost there are times you go with your heart heavy but there are times that he chooses what dimension to be expressed in prayer there are times you go to prayer wanting to decree and bind and cast and god wants koinonia fellowship are we together don't resist it i'm saying this because many prayer warriors have missed it here there are times you go to god and he does he just wants you to be still in his presence and you are just praying in tongues and his power is just upon you and you feel that you are not praying because you are not dissipating energy to be heard by another person whereas there is communion the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the koinonia the fellowship the sharing the participation and under those kinds of most times when god switches to that dimension what is happening to you is impartation most impartations happen through that time of fellowship it is not the binding and casting in that stillness you are about to go for a ministration and you are praying and you are just soaking and for hours all you are doing is lying down there like a dead man thirty minutes one hour and that anointing is on you waves and waves and waves of the glory you stand up from that encounter and go for your ministration and you will see the demonstration of the power and the spirit you will see great grace you will operate in the fullness of the grace that God allocated you ask those who know me when you see me praying and preparing for koinonia especially for miracle service you can be in the living room and you will not hear me sometimes when I'm alone just like that I can be walking around for a long time just walking around next thing I carry a paper I'm writing God is speaking to me I'm walking 
sometimes God is opening my eyes and I'm seeing the things that he's going to be doing I'm writing and God is revealing things see let me tell you something I'm not saying it's in the Bible but it's something that has helped my prayer life try praying in the night minimize light many times when you pray in the night you need darkness to see light it's a mystery that only prayerful people understand help that person running out here I have prayed most effective in an atmosphere where my eyes can see very few things you hear God the distractions are minimal you are not looking and checking and then seeing your phone beep and say ah maybe it's the alert that has come these things are distracting God is speaking destiny things to you you need your attention I love praying in the night off the light you may just have red light here flashing green light it's enough for your eyes to see use your your phone that's why you know some of us who just gave our lives to Christ now thank God for you but you see we had a privilege of praying well because many times we prayed outside and we prayed in the night when God gives you money and you build a good house build a beautiful garden so not for visitors for meeting with God go back to the garden of Eden build a beautiful place and you are praying you are praying fellowship son you have done well it's time to move to the next level do it this way do it this way change this change that yes lord you are praying sometimes it is god that introduces your petitions not you okay you were talking to me about the issue of finance for the ministry um let me tell you what you will do i am going to inspire you and a book is going to come the name of the book is maybe whatever it is and as you write this book my hand will come upon it and it will go to the ends of the earth yes lord you have received the blueprint you will write a book that does not make sense and it will bring results that don't make sense because you discuss with God in the secret place look at how God came to Abraham study God's study Abraham's prayer life it was full of fellowship and then there are times that you carry a burden and you go to God sincerely Lord we need to talk there are things we need to talk about see let me tell you this do not be afraid to come to God with your needs do not feel less spiritual the truth is that God wants your joy to be full bring the school fees issue bring the your brother issue bring the salvation issue bring it before him Lord why am I still going back to my village in my dreams I thought I was free come before him he's your father this attack that I thought left me this thing that I thought I'd breaking I'd broken free from one year two years ago why is it coming back to my life you can come to God in prayer Lord why is it that when I'm blessed I'm only blessed for three weeks one week I go back to look like my past something is wrong you can pray you can go to the God who answers prayers and then there are times my brothers and my sisters where you obtain grace from God but you need to stand can I tell you this most of the victory of a believer listen carefully will come through dimension one and dimension three when you do one and three effectively you will have little of petitions to bring spare me two three minutes we'll wrap up with rules of engagement i will show you some of the do's and don'ts in prayers decrees are powerful my day i speak to you I command my morning, I command my afternoon. 
I command my evening, hear the word of the Lord. Line up according to God's word. The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. It's not the devil that made it. If God made my day, let it look good. Because anything God makes, it is good. This is how you pray. Everything God made, it is good. I remove accidents from my day. I remove trouble from my day. I decree and declare. It is well with me. I decree and declare. Favor comes to me. You get into your shop. You don't sit down and start calling and say, I'm now here. No. You lock your door. I decree and declare. Even if it's in two minutes. I declare that favor comes today. By the power of the Holy Spirit. My products are a delight to many. They are coming by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Recently, God introduced a very great friend to my life. Wonderful man. Extremely wealthy man. Very, very extremely wealthy. Um, I'll not mention the name. But then we're having a meeting with the man and then he spoke to me and he said, Apostle, let me tell you, before my workers start, seven, he's a billionaire, seven a.m. in the morning, we all pray. We have fasting sessions and we pray. We declare to God that we have no wisdom on our own. I say, are you not blessed now? Away with that nonsense that when you pray your business, you, you involve God. Uh, you are not being social. Go to Dubai. Go to the Gulf nations. And see how these people take their idols and take it. They teach it as part of the ways to succeed. They teach you to do your yoga. They teach you to do your transcendental meditation. They believe that if not for anything, it relaxes the mind. Only believers who are ashamed and afraid of God. I'm not saying to go and be praying during office hours. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that you need to involve God in your life unashamedly. Listen, if you are here and you are in business, I'm teaching you this as God grants you grace. Even if your business partner is an unbeliever, you may not just shout and pray, but even if it's under your breath, Lord, this is the day. I bless the bread I'm making. I bless my shop. I bless this. I decree and declare. And you will see how your day will look like. Lord, every troublemaker is far from all that I do. For the Bible declares that the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Recently, I had, I had the story of a, a gentleman. This is true. A gentleman who was just sitting down and he got an alert of over eight zeros and two days later a prominent institution in this country just called him and they said they are going to come and carry you to the court we are associating you to a fraud case and he said what is all this did you receive so 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 alert yes sir remain silent until you come there true story a lot came to my destiny do you know what the account the money was to be transferred to i don't know how that happened it eventually found its way to his account most evil you think that is breakthrough that guy is in trouble because of that thing he may not get visas to travel again it is not breakthrough you want to transfer money corrupt money quickly to somebody's account then it's my own account no, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. When I had that thing, I prayed for myself because people bless me all the time. I prayed for myself. Lord, let nobody carry stolen money in this country so that they will now put on newspaper, expose Apostle Joshua Selman is involved with somebody's money. Shout no way. Listen, I'm telling you that if you do not decree and you live your life barren you can receive 100 million in your church one year later you are in prison everything that is evil and would destroy you may god keep it far from your life but it will not just happen just by talking listen you are the priest of your destiny you are the prophet of your destiny i will continue speaking over your life but you must learn to speak speak as believers we approach life from the standpoint of victory 
Remember that our decree is to establish. Hallelujah. Let me just give you two rules of engagement. I've said it, but our time is up. Number one, rules of engagement. Prayer must be approached from the standpoint of the love of God and the victory of Christ Jesus. Rules of engagement in the prayer ministry. Number one, prayer must be approached from the standpoint of the love of God and the victory of Christ Jesus. Prayer must be approached from two standpoints. Number one, the love of God. The awareness of the love of God, the fatherhood of God. That once I am within the will of God, God is not withholding anything. To, so it gives me the confidence to approach him. And then number two, the victory. Please, this is important. Listen to me, believers. Whether it is warfare or spiritual decrees and legislature, you are already a, vic a victim if you do not realize that you are standing upon the victory and the liberty of Christ. That is the basis from which we approach prayer. We do not approach prayer to win. We approach prayer to establish realities that have already been wrought in the Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians 1 and when you read from verse 3 that God has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Listen to me. So whether we pray and say I command that cause to leave you are not necessarily listen to me you are taking advantage of the victory that christ has wrought and you are now superimposing it upon the rebellion of darkness rules of engagement david already won before he met goliath but he still fought david already won before his covenant already killed goliath but he stood before goliath to establish it that's why he said goliath i'm i'm here to bring down your head give it to the bird he's finished hallelujah from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but your sins was not atoned for by casting it out jesus came and died his dying was not negating what he did in prophecy his dying was giving it expression so i believe in warfare I believe in casting out demons but my approach is from the standpoint of victory are we together now please take it down let me sing one song we're preparing to to wrap up um what's that darling jackson every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. One more time. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Listen to me. Listen, Koinonia, you must approach life like one who has won. You must approach life like life owes you because you are victorious. Now, thanks be to God who always causes us. He's already doing thanksgiving. Thanks be to God. I never approach life to win. I approach life to establish victory. I never cast out devils. Um, as 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 the basis of victory i cast them out because the bible tells me i already have authority this is very important it looks like it's a little issue but it's a big deal in the realm of the spirit listen you are already blessed that's why you prosper you prosper to give evidence to the blessing prosperity is manifesting the blessing on you you are blessed with wisdom. You are blessed with relationships. You are blessed with favor. You are blessed with divine direction. These are true riches. When you engage them and they produce prosperity, 
it is not when money comes to you that you are blessed money comes as a receipt that it is true you are blessed are we together the awareness you own the universe you own yeah. everyone on earth you own that's my father the universe listen do you know why I approach prayer this way I don't approach prayer hoping that God will answer me no I don't approach if it is not the will of God I don't even pray it if I'm confused I inquire in prayer and the spirit of revelation will come and open up scripture and bring the voice of God I only pray when I'm sure of the will of God. If I am not sure, I pray to know the will of God. Then knowing the will of God, I pray to establish it. Listen, when you know this, your prayer becomes rich. Because every time I catch you praying, you should be doing one or more, all of the following. Fellowship or obtaining promises in the spirit or establishing reality whether you are interceding for souls whether you are speaking over territories it comes under spiritual legislation that way you are walking in dominion this is what prayer was designed for we are doing many things today that prayer was not designed for it is the reason why we do not get results your prayer life cannot go down when you see the necessity of prayer you know that without prayer my fellowship will be bankrupt without prayer i cannot obtain promises and without prayer i cannot create a climate of the word of god in my life when do we pray all the time anytime anytime is right for prayer anytime is right for prayer you can be buffing and making decrease my day is blessed in the name of Jesus any time may not be conducive for the study of the word because you need the Bible you need materials you need time but any time is conducive for prayer I may excuse you for not reading your Bible today but I will not excuse you for praying you will need time to settle down and really read and meditate but you don't need any time including when you turn to the other side on your bed you can train your spirit man listen if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost here with evidence of speaking in tongues it doesn't matter what you believe or don't believe about it there is a dimension of the priesthood of the saints that you may never come into please hear what I tell you this is not some debate it is truth from scripture that there is a dimension of prayer tonight we are going to borrow five minutes from our time and we are going to pray we are going to obtain promises and we are going to make decrees is someone ready to change things in your life please rise up on your feet Listen, the Bible says, you have not because you ask not. If my little children here come and ask me and say, Daddy, I want sweet, I will buy them sweet for two reasons. One, I love them and two, I am able. Now unto him, the him loves you and the him is able to do. The two conditions for making sure your needs reach you have been solved. As far as God's side is concerned, he loves you and he is able. Please listen to me. God loves you and God is able. God loves me and God is able. Therefore, there's no restraint from him giving me the anointing. There's no restraint to lifting me. God loves me and he is able. 
God loves me and he's able. If I do not obtain, then it means my heart is selfish, dogged in rebellion, and I am praying outside of his will. Can you open your mouth and in the next two minutes, just pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. What things soever ye desire, when you pray, when you pray, when you pray, koinonia, you are praying to the God of the universe the mighty God please pray koinonia The universe, you are everyone on earth. You are the universe. You are you are the universe. Pray, hallelujah hallelujah obtained promises obtained promises obtained promises what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou received it and thou shall have it listen in the next two minutes i'd like you to receive things in the spirit the things that the bible said please don't take casual this opportunity we are operating under an anointing i'd like you to declare receive by faith in the name of jesus receive mantles receive anointings receive open doors receive favors receive ble blessings receive graces in the name of jesus receive ease That you may receive that your joy may be fulfilled shouts of joy there are shouts of joy joy shouts of joy in my life there are shouts of 
of joy. Karuda shala barada balakata. Shout of joy. Ebra toshela baba baba. Pray. Karitosh ke ebra karutia. Obtain promises. Obtain breakthroughs. Obtain open doors. By faith in prayer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're wrapping up. Now, please, I'd like you to take this remaining two minutes seriously. You are going to make decrees. You are not talking to God. You are talking to your destiny. You are talking to your life. Are you ready to pray? Open your mouth and make decrees. Lift up your heads. Oh, ye gates. Matosh kabarantas kamarata. Lift up your heads. I command closed doors be open in the name of Jesus. I hold the keys of David and I command the doors open that no man will shut. I decree and declare my path is as a shining light. It shines brighter. It shines brighter unto the perfect day. I decree and declare I shall not die. I live. I choose life. I choose life. I reject death. Not by accident. Not by the soul. God is a with favor like a shield. God is a with favor like a shield. In the name of Jesus, I go from glory to glory. I go from power to power. I go from grace to grace. From anointing to anointing. From wisdom to wisdom. Koinonia is like a shining light that grows brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. The Lord gives the word from this place and great be the company of them that publish it. Bless your children. Bless your wife. Bless your husband. Bless your home. Bless your finances. Bless your spiritual life. We declare over Zaria, we declare over Kaduna, we declare over Nigeria in the name of Jesus, rising from glory to glory. Everything I do prospers in the name of Jesus. No failure in my life. No failure with me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. Please listen to me. Your prayer life must come back alive. I'm telling you this. You are here in this place and you know your prayer life is down. You are doing yourself a disservice. You are doing your destiny a disservice. If you are a man here and you don't pray, you will be a bad priest in your home in destiny. He spake a parable that men ought always to pray. There is nobody under this grace who should not be a man of prayer. Where did you get that one from? Now I've given you a revelation that sponsors your prayer life. Listen, you have an assignment to find conducive places for prayer. Find it! God will help you. 
pray make decrees speak over things you buy a new phone don't just plug it and start using it in the name of Jesus I declare that within the time this phone is with me it will serve me I will not answer evil I will not listen to evil reports learn to pray you buy a new car don't just enter and drive yourself to your grave I decree and declare the hand of the Lord is upon this you pay for a new house or you buy a new house in the name of Jesus this is the habitation of the Lord you enter a new shop I speak peace a new semester as a student or a new session I declare I give this session a name I call it ease I call it excellence I call it recovery pray as a couple pray with your children pray as business people pray as a man of God pray all the time pray these dimensions of prayer and watch your life continue to rise death will come and look for you it will turn back failure will come and look for you it will turn back everything that does not have the signature of the Christ will come and look for you and go back your life only becomes an unending epistle of wonders see let me tell you this I stopped being afraid of my success when I found out it was God and me that were controlling it if you do not know that it's you and God in partnership controlling your results you will fear it these blessings that has come today will it ever stay ah, will it ever stay Yeshua how dare you ask me whether my tomorrow will be better than my today of course of course no man's opinion is involved God alone and I agree with him that tomorrow will always dwarf today it's a covenant of growth that koinonia's tomorrow will always God will give us peace by all means. When these words come, don't think they are just empty speakings. The carnal man cannot discern the things of God. The word of God is like a tray. You have to receive the tray before you receive what is on it. Are we together now? The word of God is a tray. It carries miracles, carries deliverance, carries healings. So when you receive the word, the engrafted word, you now take what is in it. Be conscious of the prophetic word. Number two, be conscious of the covenant. Covenant is a very deep spiritual word. Many people just shout covenant around, but they don't even know what it means. Listen, a covenant is a system that commits God and causes him to vow to ensure that a person or an institution continues to receive certain predictable outcomes. It's a covenant. There is the covenant of answered prayer. There is the covenant of God's presence. There is a covenant of results. Every man that God truly calls and every ministry that God truly ordains, there are underlying spiritual covenants. The platform upon which God put his vow and his integrity that as touching this and this, I will make happen. It's true. Also, be conscious of the graces. You see that? The graces that are available within that territory. You cannot receive a man's covenant. You can only partake of it. But you can receive graces. You are a pastor. You come and your church is grounded. You only have 50 members during your annual Thanksgiving. Thank God for that. But something is wrong. God is a God of increase. You can come with hearts open to receive the grace. How about hardship? Things not working well. How about your spiritual growth? You are at the same level for five years. The knowledge of scripture, zero. Health of your prayer life, zero. You are a man of God and nobody is placing a demand on the grace of God that you have. It will frustrate you eventually. But there are graces. Every possibility in the kingdom is governed by an operation of grace. When that grace comes upon your life, your result shows. Thou anointest my head with oil. 
the result shows through my cup he does not anoint your cup he anoints your head your cup proves what is on your head are we together now so this is very important thank you and you have to understand the way this works we're going to pray shortly and i need you to know how this works i want you to receive be conscious of the graces not some of you may not need may not need a miracle like miracle from sickness or whatever but understand that when you come it's like an exchange of graces listen the bible says give us please second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 please give it to us quickly second corinthians 9 and verse 8 praise the lord read with me please koinonia ready one to read stop 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 god is able to make all grace let me explain that to you please all of you come stand anywhere you want to stand just stand anywhere scatter yourself around don't come close to me just stand watch this call these guys graces the grace for prosperity the grace for favor the grace for speed the grace for spiritual fire the grace for influence watch this access to the hearts of men this is you this is your destiny and the bible says the way we advance is that we need to be in touch with all graces not some i can have the grace for prosperity and i'm rich but i suffer but i succeed you are rich but no man helps you because you don't have favor you only have prosperity the proof of favor is not money is the loyalty of men if you do not have access to the hearts of men you don't have favor you may have resources so this guy has prosperity so he will labor wake up in the morning sleep late in the night eat the bread of sorrow mix it with hard work and eventually prosper but as far as spiritual fire is concerned the grace that plants in a man the hunger and the passion for the things of god is not in him so that grace is not there he has some but not all and the part the grace dimension he does not have the deficiency of it will show in his life he is getting richer but not as his soul prospers this is the grace he needs when you pray and intercede for this man now god will answer your prayer by channeling him to a ministry or a man of god that has this dimension so that in addition it will be added to him are we together now now listen very carefully please look up everybody so god is one of the things that happens here is that the spirit of god continues to move like a wind and he scans your life which grace do you need in this season that you do not yet have this is one of the biggest miracle that happens in a miracle service most people do not know you sit under this atmosphere and there is an updating it's like a software god finds out that this level you are entering into there are at least 21 graces but as it is there are only four so while the meeting worship is going prayer is going there is an upgrade that grace so here's what the bible says god is able to make hold my hands so you come for koinonia miracle service dry nothing is on your head and nothing is around your life too because what is around you is a is a report card telling what is on you are we together now you obtain the grace that makes for abundance for the sake and the grace for wealth that works in this ministry forces you to love god while you are wealthy if you receive a grace that makes you wealthy and as you are rising in wealth you are leaving god that anointing did not come from this ministry the grace for this ministry has been it has been edited to a covenant to ensure that as men rise their hearts also rise for god not the kind of nonsense money that makes you leave god you don't honor anything that has to do with god again no it is as you prosper even as your soul prospers it's babylon that gives wealth that prospers you and diminishes your soul watch this so you receive this grace and then the holy spirit finds out grace for what favor come watch this praise and worship you got this one during praise and worship you didn't even know why you felt like falling you just thought that ah the song was so nice something had landed on your head are we together now this is speed hold me now my dear watch this this is what is happening in koinonia you are sitting down but you just know that there is a weight 
that glory something is coming on you you can't tell you are not even falling you are not shouting you will look at someone shouting and feel bad and feel like i i wish i'm the person falling whereas the holy ghost is doing very serious things and then access to the hearts of men this is your package for miracle service now you receive this watch this we now share the grace watch this watch this remember you travel from another nation the uk us kenya wherever and then you just came and at the end of the service satan can even fool you you are from kenya oh i see please sit down madam i see how it's a kenyan uh, god bless you now watch this you can receive this and while you receive it they will share the grace and you will still feel like nothing came on you but you see the exam is not marked in church go out listen please koinonia understand what i teach you and god is able you came for a meeting and you carried this in two days someone who forgot you no listen he does not just remember i've taught you this last week a book is open in the realm of the spirit by reason of the grace that you carry watch this in one week a strange grace for illumination you think hold on you think it's the spirit of revelation it's not revelation it's speed it's just that speed demands revelation there are graces when you carry they call others too so that they will work well in your life and god is able god is able god is able there are people because of the graces you carry you will sustain the grace to fast for three days for one week remember that was a condition god gave you to allow your spirit allow him do certain things but the fortitude to fast that long was not there so the grace comes and while you wait upon the lord 10 years immediately is released within one month listen if all you see is just physical healings and deliverances you are not seeing well the major part of what calls listen one of the major reasons why god sends people from other nations and other places to this place is number one to be able to stand by the grace he has provided for to solve their problems but more than that to expose you to ancient mantles these are graces that were there by covenant listen there is nothing i carry that is as old as me everything i carry is older than me by far we are only stewards the grace predates us it's a relay we are running others ran it and god added on it and gave us to hold it for a generation to know the certainty of the things whereof you have been instructed please hear me if you believe what i share with you tonight you will marvel and you will wonder you can choose tonight to agree with god that every challenge except it does not have a name that in this place this night god will bring it down we are going to have like 10 minutes of serious prayer now listen please during that time of prayer forget about who is by your left and right forget about me just stay with god and pray passionately for the next 10 minutes lord i came for an encounter i came to receive healing i came to receive deliverance but i came to also attach myself to covenants i came by the spirit to receive graces outside inside online lift your voice and pray be restoration please bring them out quickly 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 let's save time please in the break to shila restoration now i speak it by the spirit 
the power of God is still coming on people. Recover, recover by the Spirit. Recover, I stretch my hands. Recover by the power of prophecy. Recover, recover years lost. Recover opportunities. E Paris Kebarashanda la Katariata. Recover in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare God is bringing recovery. Let me tell you, you will marvel and wonder that the things you thought has left you, you are about to find it waiting for you in your tomorrow. I speak to you, may that grace come upon you now again. Recovery, recovery, recovery. Restoration. I want to take authority over the spirit of delay. I'm seeing many people, your feet is chained in the spirit. You want to make progress, but you cannot make progress. Fire is falling from heaven now. I decree and declare, inside, outside, all the overflows, anyone under the sound of my voice, who is under the influence of the spirit of delay, at the count of three, may fire from heaven fall upon those chains. One, two, three. I break those chains now. Be free now from delay. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I will hasten my word to perform it. I will not just perform it. I will give speed to my word. The word is quick and powerful. I declare again, any family here, any individual under the yoke of delay, I speak to you by the spirit. That yoke is broken now. That yoke is broken now. broken by the spirit hallelujah now I want to pray please listen I have prayed this prayer and for those of you who have missed it in time past may God grant you the grace to receive it now listen truly speaking there is a grace for speed please hear me a man's lifetime cannot allow the fullness of the purposes of God to be birthed. Some of you gave your life to Christ late already in life. It's not enough to rebuke delay. You must obtain the grace for speed. And watch this. I'm about to pray for people now. And that anointing is coming on people. As usual, you'll find people running by the Spirit. But I need to release that anointing. Father, I stand under heaven in this miracle service. There are people who have traveled from several nations and several territories at the count of three for you and for your family. That dimension of speed where 10 years can be put in one year. I declare right now, let it come upon you. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Speed. Parush Kabarakata. Speed. Career speed. I give speed to your life, speed to ministry. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Speed. Hello, Madonna. Hallelujah. Mommy. Please look at me, ma. Don't be embarrassed. I don't know you, but I'm seeing strong witchcraft over your family. Where are you coming from, madam? Madam, I'm looking at you. I'm seeing River State. Where are you from? States. Huh? States. River State. Yes, sir. The Lord says I should tell you that from this night, things will change in your life. She's your mother. Help that woman, please. I'm looking at the Lord in the spirit. I'm putting my hand inside a river. And I'm bringing something out. And the Lord says it's the destiny of this family. In the name of Jesus, that's the daughter. I command by the spirit. Every planting that is not of the Lord. I overturn and I uproot now. In the name of Jesus Christ.
Who is Naomi? I'm hearing a name, Naomi. We have to hurry up. I want to pray for the sick. Naomi. Hello, Kim Madonna. The Naomi I'm talking about is outside. Where are you coming from? Come, stand. Your name is not Naomi. Is your name Naomi? What's your name? Come, stand. Where are you coming from, my dear? UK. From where? I want to pray for you. Your name is Naomi. Come and stand. We have to hurry up. Hold on. I cancel CS. I, Madam, look at me. I stretch my hands now. I cancel CS by the Spirit of the Living God. And I decree and declare, like the Hebrew women, you will give birth. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm saying it again. I correct what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. This is what doctors say, baby is breached. In the name of Jesus, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I correct it now. May you give birth normally like the Hebrew women. In Jesus' name. Let me pray. Are you married? You are backing a baby. Where is the baby? I'm looking at you in a vision. That's why I'm saying, oh, how can this? You know, I'm saying you came to Koinonia. You are backing a baby outside. This is the vision. I'm... You are not getting what I'm saying. Is this? You were backing this baby when I mentioned your case. Huh? Were you backing a baby? That's why I'm saying, are you married? Because you look too small to be a married woman. This is the real person I want to pray for. Bring this little baby. God is, I don't know whose child is this. Your child. But God, this lady you see is going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of God. She looks like a little girl. In the name of Jesus. What's her name? Nicole. Nicole. She may not know what we are doing, but we stand in the presence of the people of God. We anoint this lady. May she become a Deborah to her generation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My dear, let me pray for you. Where are you from? Kogi State. I want to pray for you. Huh. Immediately she mentioned Kogi State. I saw what I used to see now. Now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria. And I'm seeing the power of God going to Kogi State. Kogi State. I'm praying now. It's a sign and wonder. Every time I see that, if you are from that locality, the power of God comes on you immediately. In the name of Jesus, I command witchcraft associated with that territory. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Hallelujah. Who is Magdalene? Magdalene, my dear, come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I anoint you. There is grace. You look young, but you are going to be a mother to men. This is what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord anoint you and make it so. My dear, I rebuke the hand of witchcraft. Now, release her. I'm seeing chains on you. I declare by the Spirit, release this lady now. I'm about to minister deliverance shortly. Release her now. In the name of Jesus. Please bring someone in overflow too now. A lady. The power of God is coming upon that lady. Now as I speak, overflow too. Mighty fire of God is coming. Please bring her quickly. We have to save time. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Come my dear. The grace that will want to make married men disturb you. Look at me. I come against that spirit now. Not only you. There are five other people I'm seeing. I don't know where they are, 
but in Jesus name there is a like like it like an almost like an evil anointing that makes only married people to look for you in the name of Jesus by the God of heaven I lift that negative thing off your life now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I hear the name Magdalene I don't know if Magdalene I want to pray very quickly we have to pray for the sick you are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping Yahweh, Yahweh, covenant keeping God. Yahweh, covenant keeping God. Your name is Magdalene. you can I decree and declare by the spirit of the living God I'm seeing your feet in mud in the name of Jesus I lift you out of this tragedy by the power of the Holy Spirit and I speak to this lady I'm seeing this lady but all I'm seeing is snakes completely I declare be free now by the spirit of the living God the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Be free right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let me pray for you, my dear. Grace for you. The favor that is on your life, I command it to start speaking. It will not only be a name that is on you. It will speak right now in Jesus' name. Your sister, your name is Magdalene. Come. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord bless you. Look at me. The Lord is taking away shame and reproach from your life. These two things. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Please stand up. I speak to you by the God of heaven. The month of November, a big miracle is coming to your life. A big miracle. I lay my hands upon you and I declare the name of Jesus. Be free right now. Why is this girl here? This Magdalene? Come, my dear. I pray for you. Place your hand on your head. I declare, oh God, let this chain be taken now. I'm seeing a chain on this girl's head. Be removed now. Be removed. This, like the devil wanting to just bring this lady under captivity. I remove it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody lay your hands on her. So anybody just touch her. Release her now by the Spirit of God. There's no place for you. Take everything that belongs to her. Restore it and go. Now. Now please listen. I want to minister deliverance. Please believe it. You may not know. The woman from Kenya. Come. It's time for God to change your life. Please stand up. When did you come here? Uh, yesterday. Yesterday. Yes. You came here. God is about to turn your life around. Amen. Glory. You are still coming. And you are coming with four people the next time you are coming. Amen. Thank you. Jesus. Madam, what do you do? Madam, what do you do? I'm a commissioner for human rights. Commissioner for human rights. Yes. In Nairobi. Yes. In, in two weeks... I'm going to be in your nation. I would like to see you in your nation. There is a reason why I'm talking. I'm not seeing you alone. I'm seeing four other people yes. that the Lord wants me to pray for. Yes. But I want to pray for you, madam. Because I don't know if you believe it or not. You have a political destiny. As you are like this, looking at me. You have a political destiny in Kenya. And God, by his spirit, is going to make this happen. But another thing is there is also the call of God upon your life. You're a woman that loves God. There is, is starting like an intercessory grace and a prophetic grace. But you get to a point where among the graces God will give you is the grace to pray for barren women. Notice this grace. 
God is going to bring this grace upon you. God, I'm also seeing you build a charity foundation. There is going to be a mighty humanitarian foundation that I see you build. I'm seeing food stuff and I'm seeing different things. First, it will have to do with young girls, people who have been abused and so on. But I see not only that, I see women too. Women, God is going to increase your influence. I lay my hands upon you and I declare by the Spirit, carry this grace. Go to Kenya with it, go and excel. I command the two lift gates of Nairobi and the entire Kenya to be open for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, go with this anointing, go and prosper. May the Lord multiply your political career and may the Lord prepare you for the mighty ministerial assignment he has for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. An angel of the Lord is standing here. Someone will shout here under a strong anointing. I just saw that grace. I don't know. First, I think until the shout happens, I know why God, just from here right to the back, there is an anointing. I just saw a, a very mighty manifestation of the power of God here. Now, listen. Whether you know it or not, if there is anything influencing your, your destiny that is not of the Christ, it's about to give way right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. At the count of three, hear me. Whether you are inside, outside, or following online, I want you to shout that name Jesus with understanding. It's not just a chant. My Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower, not a weak tower. The righteous run it to it and they are saved. I want to pray for you. I know you've shouted in other months, but great deliverance, great deliverance is about to come your way. Father, I pray that every spirit in this place that does not name the name of the Christ, that is sitting on the destinies, of men and women manipulating their results i stand and call upon the god of jeshurun the one that rides upon the wings and i declare let there be deliverance at the count of three shout that name jesus one two three be free now be free now be free now please bring them out be free now. Overflow one. Overflow two. Overflow three. All the extension online. I declare be free now from ancestry. Be free from foundation. Be free from witchcraft. Bring them out. Paru Salikata. barata. Operations of darkness. I'm seeing a womb. Like the drawing of a woman's womb. And I'm seeing it close. It doesn't just mean physical barrenness. It means a spirit that is closing the door of results. Many people cannot get results. But right now that door is about to open. And I stand by the God of heaven. By the fire of the Holy Ghost everyone's destiny that has been closed so that it will not find manifestation at the count of three let it be open one two three be open now 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 Faithful God, I 
for finances listen to me please I want you to believe it there is a grace for finances and it's coming on many people I'm not asking you what you are doing I'm not asking you what you know I'm telling you what God is doing I stand by the God of heaven and I declare father the men and women that must enter into this dimension as you are showing me at the count of three, may that grace rest upon you. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. A strength grace for abundance. Receive supplies from heaven. Supplies by the Spirit. Parush Kalipa. Let things work in a way that will surprise you. I command things to work in a way that will marvel you. Haru <laughs> Salikatash. Mighty God. A few minutes, we are going to pray for the sick now. Now, please listen. I'm only going to do this for this overflow and overflow one. That's not to mean I'm neglecting the remaining. It's just a revelation that God is giving me. There are two angels standing by my left and my right. And every time I see this, God wants me to move. Listen. Hear me, except God is not God. When I pass any road where you are, anything that does not name the name of the Christ and any dimension that is not of God in your life, it must give way. Now, I only do this for this and overflow one. Afterwards, we are going to pray for the sick. Please, I want you to just believe. I don't know why God does these things, but I want you to believe that He is mighty. And that he will glorify himself. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, glorify yourself. Change everything that needs to be changed. Many of you will be receiving impartations that will shift you to dimensions. I want you to believe it. I will pray not everywhere, but there are a few people. 
I'm seeing this happen by the Spirit. Hali Shalatos, Pragados, Rekete I shift you in the Spirit. Every limitation that does not name the name of Christ, I'm praying mantles, anointings by the Spirit coming on people right now. Let that presence of God shift you to dimensions in the name of Jesus. Dimensions. I'm seeing a chain around here. I break that chain now. I'm seeing a chain around here. Let that chain be broken now. Let that chain be broken now. Let that chain be broken now. Break now. Break now. Break now. Chains be broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, God is turning your life around. Where are you coming from? Kaduna State. In the name of Jesus. Break now. In the name of Jesus. Be free now. From everything that is not of God. Be free now. Something is breaking here. Something is breaking here. Something is breaking here. Parush Ali Katos. I break it now. 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 By the Spirit of the Living God. I break it now. Mama, I break it now. I break it now. sensing an evil spirit just around here. I come against you now. I take authority over that influence. You must go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Overflow one, lift your voice and pray in the spirit. Harusa Zigadesh. Now listen. Brother's keeper, you don't have to touch me. Please be your brother's keeper so you don't enjoy yourself. But as I pass here, anything that is not of God is about to give way right now. Thank you, Jesus. Go now, let it go now, let it go now, let it go now. All times I come against you now. In Here is breaking, breaking over someone's family. Be broken now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be broken now. Be broken now. Beauty and glory to your life in the name of Jesus. Now, watch this. Listen, hold on, please. Hold on, please. I'm standing here and I'm seeing. Who is Rebecca? Rebecca, they call you Becky. Rebecca, just not inside. Here you are. What's your name? Rebecca. Don't worry, it's okay. What's your name? Don't just come out if, in the name of Jesus Christ, come. I end oppression now over your life and your family. Oh, you, my dear, your name is Rebecca. Where are you from? You are from, are you from Makodi? Benway State, in the name of Jesus. I keep seeing this spirit every time I pray for people. That thing they call Aleku, A-L something K-U. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit by the God of heaven. If there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is a victim of that spirit, you are from that region, I stand by the God of heaven. Let it come to an end now. Help them please. Let it come to an end now. In the name of Jesus, hold on please. Right here, 
there is a gentle man who will be mightily used by God. I just saw a strong mantle from my head resting on someone. I stretch my hands. Lord, I don't know where they are. Let that grace come on you now. Strange mantle, prayer fire, word fire, illumination in the spirit. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. I'm standing here and I'm seeing a family with a yoke of marital delay. I'm seeing something that looks like an arrow just coming from heaven. Right now, let deliverance come now. Let it come now. I'm still moving. The hand of God is coming on people right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please, you don't have to touch me. In the name of Jesus, right here, financial stagnation comes to an end. An anointing is coming on someone for your family. Financial stagnation. Let it be over now. My dear, be free now. Out! Now! Someone here, the power of God is coming on that person. Be free now! Free from everything that is not of God. New dimensions, new dimensions. I'm seeing an anointing here. New dimension. The old story must leave you. That's what God is saying. I'm prophesying to someone here. The old story must leave you. The old is gone so that the new will come. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is the woman? Wait, hold on please. I held someone's hand now. Holding a photo of a sick patient. Where is she? Come. Who is this? Where is he? He's in China. What's wrong with him? He's depressed now. If I don't pray for him, I'm seeing him inside a coffin. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Let there be deliverance for him now. What's his name? Ibrahim. This is not only something affecting him. This is something that is influencing the entire family. But I stand by the God of heaven and I set you free. In the name of Jesus. Be completely free. And I speak to him, Ibrahim. May the power of God touch you. And perfect you now. And perfect you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for the sick. My friend, this man looking at me, come. Where are you coming from? Huh? You are from Kogi State. What do you do? Are you a man of God? You came here trusting God for fresh fire. Come. You are about to receive it because I'm seeing you from Kogi State. You, where is your church? Look at me, sir. Where You have a church? You are under a church. Hmm. A time will come, God will give you your own work. Now God is preparing you. Be faithful. You will go, but now is not the time. You leave now, you will suffer for nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let sincere people come and push you out of the will of God. But surely a time is coming, and you will walk in very strange dimensions of the anointing. Father, I lay my hands upon this man. Let his dealings with the Spirit progress. In the name of Jesus. Not only an impartation, a dealing that produces real power in the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. This lady with green, this lady, you, come. The Lord is about to turn your life around in a way that will surprise you. Two things will happen to you. Number one, I'm seeing restoration. God is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration. Number two, I'm seeing the gift of men. Please do listen to my message. Help them on the gift of men. God is bringing people strangely to lift you. I lay my hands upon you and I pray, may this grace be effectual. Carry that grace right now. And you will start having visions. Visions. God is going to start giving you dreams and he will start giving you visions. In the name of Jesus. This is very strange what I'm seeing. 
except that I saw it, I will not say it. Stop running away from the call. You are a man of God's wife. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm saying what does not make sense. Stop running from the call. You are the wife of a man of God, a minister of the gospel. The Lord will bring performance to his word. This thing I tell you is a strange mystery, the way God works. But in the name of Jesus, I place the word of God upon that prophecy. It's time for you to not fight the will of God. It's time for you to relinquish your own will in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray just one prayer point. The Lord is asking me, immediately we do that, we'll pray for the sick and we'll start submitting our request. Where is that young lady that came out with one mama while I was praying for her? There's a young lady that was wearing glasses. I don't, if, if you are here, you are the one. What do you do? You are going to be very wealthy. Come. Are you a lawyer? Huh? Is this your mother? Where are you coming from, madam? Okay, you are the rivers woman. This lady you see is going to be extremely wealthy. Because I'm seeing you a lawyer. And you are going to, you, I don't know what area of law you are going to specialize. But I'm seeing you sitting with so many business people. This is a lot of business people. Signing contracts, helping people to process a lot of things. Millions, huh? That's what? That's where she is right now. Doing some things abroad. She's what? That's what she's doing right now, where she works. That's what she's doing now. Right now, where she works. Because I'm seeing God will just cause them to like her. It's not every man that is a foolish and a stupid man. There are people who are out to genuinely bless. Yes, sir. And I pray for your daughter and I connect her by the Spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. she will find these people. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, she will shift her to another dimension. Amen. Mama, God is saying I should tell you, forgive. Does it make sense to you? That's my husband also. He's a lawyer. But... Your husband is a lawyer? Yes, yes. What was the issue? Nothing is happening. Don't worry, ma. Do you know why you fell under the anointing? You fell on behalf of all the troubles in your... It wasn't just your personal falling alone. There are times that you fall representing all of these troubles because this is not what I'm even saying. God is saying I should tell you to forgive. Forgiveness. Now, it doesn't make sense and God has not given me an interpretation. But let me tell you this. You see, look up. The average person seated here has been hurt by someone. Whether friends, are we together? Uncles, relatives, people you trusted and they betrayed you. Let me tell you something about unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is a terrible spirit. It's one of the master secrets to delay. Unforgiveness. It will keep you in one place forever. You are there angry and annoyed and most of what you'll be angry about is legitimate. However, you see, forgiveness is a type of giving. Understand this. Forgiveness is still the, the giving grace that helps men to forgive. The only thing with forgiveness is that you give in advance. Are we together? The highest form of forgiveness is tolerance. Where you know it will happen again. And you build a system around it to not hurt you. We live in a society that is so hot conscious. This one hurt me. This one did this. There are too many things that can create offense. The Bible says in nothing should you be offended. It's a choice. Mama, in the name of Jesus, please don't cry. I don't know what it is and why you are crying. But my dear, comfort your mother after the prayer. Eh? In the name of Jesus, what is before you? is greater than anything that has caused you pain and in the name of jesus forgive in the name of jesus forgive i also pray for someone here do you know there are many couples that have not been able to forgive one another in marriages it can last for 10 years 20 years same room same bed but that bitterness especially for the men we don't know that this might be the secret. The Bible says for dishonoring your wife, the consequence is that your heavens will be closed. It's not a lie. That's why you see men struggle and struggle and 
simple things become hard because of the propensity for bitterness make up your mind in this miracle service that you will let go and not only forgive but tolerate i wish i can tell you there are some things your loved ones are doing that they will never do again but they will do it every time a door is about to open here offense comes it's a choice i will not be offended are we together father we pray for our daddy in the name of jesus the kind of miracle that god will do in the life of this man let it be so powerful that everybody around will know that this is the doing of the lord i decree it and i establish it in the name of jesus christ there is a gentleman here we are going to pray goodness you see how time just runs there's a gentleman here you are a member of mountain of fire where are you mountain of fire you are a serious brother mountain of fire now please I'm, I'm not just saying you attend don't listen to instructions please right MFM my friend you are serious you come from where MFM Kano MFM Kano how about yes, you Calabar. MFM Calabar how about you Lagos Lagos I want to pray I'm not saying if you are from MFM just come out like that they are particular people it doesn't matter what denomination you are from once you are here huh this is a universal, this is a master key. It will complement on what every grace and every man and woman of God is doing. But I want to pray for you. My friend, I, I'm, going, I'm first going to pray for you. Where are you from? I'm from a Bible state. There is serious witchcraft sitting on your destiny. Yes, I hope sir. you are not embarrassed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? You need help. You are prayed. Stand up, please. You are a prayer warrior. You can pray. You can do fasting. Yes, sir. Huh? sometimes you just need a grace to help you you hear what I tell you I'm going to pray for you if I don't pray for you I'm seeing the spirit of death start sweeping people in your family like that like play like play until he starts killing people but let me tell you don't despise yourself you need a lot of mentorship but you are going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of God this brother you see is very serious with God huh? very serious with God you just need the right support impartations and a mentorship system that makes for balance in your life hold my hand father what's your name huh and Tony Tony in the name of Jesus everything that represents witchcraft I join my faith with that of your father and your leader Dr. Daniel Odikoya and I decree in the name of Jesus, be free now. I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of death far from your dwelling. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. Who is looking for a job? Uh -uh, I'm not saying, I'm not on employment. I'm talking to these guys. That I, of course, I know that people are trusting God for jobs. Where did you apply? Huh? Kaduna State Civil Service. The Lord says, I should pray for you that they will give you. Do I know you applied for a job? Stand up. Uh, prophecy is powerful. In a moment, God can just change things like that. My dear, let me tell you this. It's not even the issue of Kaduna State Civil Service alone. Huh? God is going to give you unusual influence. It will marvel you. Amen. Are we together now? Hold my hands. You believe what I'm telling you? Yes. Father, confirm your word in a way that will surprise this lady. Let that rejected stone in the name of Jesus become the chief cornerstone. Receive of that grace in the name of Jesus. I speak it so. I make it so. I establish it by the power of prophecy. Let me pray for you. Gentlemen, I don't know if it's you or someone related to you, but there's someone God is giving a job. Someone looking for a job. But I want to pray for you. Father, you called out the gentlemen from MFM Kano and the remaining places. I decree and declare by the God of heaven that everything that represents witchcraft in your life, let it give way now. In the name of Jesus, let it give way now. Even by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
the Lord is showing me a lady I'm not going to ask you to come God bless you but I'm lifting up my hand I'm seeing you know how you cover a bride when you are about to marry before they remove that thing from her face this is what I'm seeing but that one is not pride of wedding this is evil covering your entire a human being with almost no head huh? and the Lord is saying I should pray that that veil be torn I don't know who that person is but right now the power of God is going there, there, there are many of you I perceive in the name of Jesus that veil that has covered you so that no good thing finds you by the God of heaven and in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I declare that veil torn into pieces now torn into pieces now inside outside online torn into pieces now the last case I attend to and then we'll begin to pray for the sick nothing ever lasts in your hand this is the problem you are trusting God for in fact is one of your requests nothing many good things continue to happen but they never last if a, if a season of open door comes three four months sometimes men can come into your life or women can come into your life and after two three months for reasons you cannot explain you have never sustained any blessing for up to two years as it comes you will see it sometimes you will go to bed in the night and you will have a dream you may see someone come maybe to molest you or to attempt to have an affair with you this is what i'm seeing the moment that thing happens it will not be up to one month and every good thing goes down but i'm praying right now in the name of jesus whoever belongs to this category every attachment you have with spirits that are not of the christ that warrant visitations in the night to molest and oppress you and spy into your liberty i declare by the spirit of god be free now be free now help them please be free now be free now my dear come you come hold my hands it's your it's a new season for you by the anointing of the holy ghost step into a new season i've touched you i saw you climbing a ladder in the spirit i release you into that dimension in the name of jesus christ we have to hurry up and pray for the sick now now please watch this this lady jumping shame and reproach i call it by his name and i command it to leave you now shame and reproach to leave you and let you go in the name of Jesus someone will run by the anointing to me don't stop the person just hold the person this is what I'm seeing by the spirit this is a ministry of signs and wonders why these things I'm not saying to run consciously I'll send you back this is by the anointing please there is order in the house of God order in the church are we together the, the hand of God now as I speak is coming upon you my soul longs and even thirst for you my heart and my flesh cries out for the living God for the living God incline your ears with trembling and tears of yearning to the throne of grace to seek your face I'm burning longing for you I need you I need you I need you I need you, I need you. I declare to all of you that came out by the spirit I shift you go forward now go forward now the power that holds you down 
I take authority over it in the name of Jesus. Go forward now. I release your families to go forward now. In the name of Jesus. Now, please hear me. Our time is gone. We have to be fast. Now, listen. For those who will be laying hands on you, don't think that because it is not Joshua Selman laying hands on you. Remember I told you that there is a grace that everyone who is called to serve in this ministry and designated and mandated carries that grace. We're about to pray for the sick now. Now listen, please. There are three conditions that I will want to minister, lay hands on the people myself. Remember, don't tell lies. You cannot come to the truth lying. Are we together? Don't insist that I just want Joshua Selman to touch. That's not the idea. Aside from those who are in the main auditorium that I request to come out, if you're trusting God for a miracle, if you are here and you are suffering from cancer, number one, number two, you are suffering from HIV, number three, you are suffering from barrenness. It doesn't matter what overflow you are in. If you have any of these three cases, please, with those who are in the main auditorium, I want you to join them and come. Otherwise, please, all the overflows, move to your projector screen and stand there, all as directed by the ushers or protocol. Anyone trusting God for to be prayed for, for healing right now, I want you to make your way to the front quickly. And then in addition to that, the three cases I've mentioned, you come into the main auditorium and join. Please, quickly, we have to hurry up. Overflow one, please walk to your projector stand. Overflow two, I don't know from where now. As directed, walk to your projector stand. Overflow three, walk to your projector stand. Um, my God, I don't know if there's overflow two B. Then just walk as you are directed. Somebody should stand in front of them and direct them appropriately, please. Overflow four. Um, also, just move to your projector stand or as directed. Those online following from whatever nation of the world, just connect by faith as we pray. Hallelujah. Now, please watch this. Our time is gone and we're going to be doing this very fast. Listen, please. If you are here and you are yet to write your prayer request, per adventure you are coming for the first time and you need an opportunity to write your prayer request, please someone help them with a piece of paper or whatever it is that you will need. Everyone, you can pen down your prayer request now. When you are done, please lift it and there will be ushers, PR help them, protocol help them, whoever needs to help them. Let's make it very fast. Overflow one, two, three, those online, I believe that theirs has also been collated. We're going to have everything now so that as soon as we're done, we'll pray for the request. The moment you are done, please wave it or pass it to the person um, at the aisle where it can be picked. Give them room to write. If you need a piece of paper, you can help your friend or wave your hand.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank God we have some hands tonight. Um, Pastor Jakes and Ejimi will do Overflow 3. Since there will be several people there, Overflow 3. They will be ministering to Overflow 3. Benga will go to Overflow 1. Promise Overflow 1, 2. Um, Kenny Overflow 2. 2A now. Uh, 2A or 2B. Praise the Lord. Isaac Overflow 2B. Praise the Lord. Ima Overflow Overflow what now? What is left? Huh? Overflow, the last overflow. Where the overflow for? Okay, no overflow to be. Go to overflow four. Praise the Lord. It will have to be a very quick walk because there are several people. I'll minister to the people here. Praise the Lord. Now, please listen. Please. Except they want to talk to you prophetically, don't worry. Listen, just a touch is all that you need. And I want you to believe by faith. As soon as they touch you, do what you couldn't do. Head back to your seat. Unfortunately, because of the limited time, we may not have time to take testimonies. As you would have seen in many of my external ministrations. For two reasons. One, this is a miracle service dedicated to ministering to people. If we pray and say, if you are healed, come out. It will take a lot of time. We don't have that luxury of time. Praise the Lord. So we are doing three things at the same time. One, we are praying for the sick. Has promised. Has promised. Okay. Pastor Alpha. Oh. Uh, who is in overflow? One. Only you. Two of you. Okay, Pastor Alpha, join them in overflow three. Pastor Femi. Uh huh. He, Pastor Femi should go to. Did I give you a place? Pastor Femi, join um, overflow two. 2B, okay, with, with Ima now. 2B or 4. You are in 2, only you. Okay, so um, Femi, please join him in Overflow 4. Overflow 4, praise the Lord. Just direct them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand by this corporate grace. And we declare, let there be miracles right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please write your requests, believing the worship team will lead us through a time of worship while we are doing this. It will be very fast. Afterwards, I will just pray and prophesy to everyone. And then we'll try to tie it up tonight. But whilst you are sitting, make sure you connect by faith. You can involve your loved ones. Let them know that God is moving right now. He's blessing people. Lord, we give you all the praise. Let there be great miracles by the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your patience. Please rise up on your feet. If they are still praying for you, where, wherever, whatever, overflow, don't worry. Just, just hang on there. Please stretch your hands to this request as we pray. I'd like you to open your mouth and begin to declare by the Spirit. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Please lift your voice, everyone. Let's have all the requests here, please. If there are people who are yet to submit. I'd like you to stretch your hands to these requests as you declare that these Egyptians that I see today, I see no more forever. Shabratos kaparuze degedea, rakata baranda skede balakoto shiata, embratos keparusha lakatos, rekete paruda shiata. Lord, turn impossible situations around. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, release miracles, release solutions, break yokes, oh God. Turn around family situations for your name's sake. Reveal callings. Reveal destinies. Let your people find purpose. Let your people find direction. Make sure you are praying. Lord, stay the power of darkness over the requests of your people. Shabarato Sedepa, Entele Koto Shabra, Shi 
Brakatos Capres Saparuta Sadekatabalash in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please agree with me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Louder, amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, tonight we come to you, the God that can answer prayers. And Lord, I decree, standing in the presence of your people, thousands of people have submitted their requests, a representation of their expectations, their pain, their disappointments, their anticipations. Lord, I decree and declare that every spirit that is back of these problems, we declare lose your grip now. Lose your grip now. Number two, I declare that every grace that needs to be released towards you for these requests to be granted by the message of the God of heaven, we decree and declare by faith we channel these graces to you. Every human agent whose mind needs to be touched by God to allow these requests to be answered in the name of Jesus, we call on the Father of Spirits to touch them on that wise. And every request that remains because of the hardness of the hearts of men, we break that hardness now. Father, answer speedily. Lord, answer speedily. Turn situations around. Every death sentence represented in this request, we declare that death sentence is cancelled. In the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we give you praise because we declare by faith, the very faith of the Son of God, that these requests are met in Jesus' name. As I stand upon these requests, I declare by the spirit of faith that in the mighty name of Jesus, that which God has done now remains permanent in Jesus' name. And I prophesy over you by the God of heaven, the Egyptians that you see today, that pursued you from Egypt to the Red Sea and beyond, I declare by the Spirit, you will see them no more forever. No matter how long you have been in Egypt, if you go out of Egypt, no going back. In the name of Jesus. Between now and the next three weeks, may the God of heaven, in the name of Jesus, 21 days was the maximum time of contention in the realm of the spirit. I decree and declare, it will not exceed three weeks. And every request that has been released already, but has been hijacked by men and systems, I mount pressure on those men and systems to allow this request manifest. I mount pressure on those systems, allow this request manifest. Let it be so in the name of Jesus. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. I'm going to declare the last prophetic one over everyone here. Please, I'd like you to be sensitive. Don't be careless about it. Hallelujah. Please, they can come and pick it. I believe in the power of prophecy. The spoken word is also creative. It can make things happen. It not only reveals what will happen, it makes things that has no business happening to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare over you, please hear me. By the God of heaven, every door that has been closed over your destiny, I stand here as the servant of the living God. I force that door to open now. Everyone trusting God for a job, a meaningful job, not a nonsense job that does not have honor. I pray now. A job that will not take your relationship away from God. A 
job that will not make you compromise receive that job in the name of Jesus I pray for your spiritual life the kind of fire that you need on your prayer life in this season I speak over you receive fresh fire access to revelation access to light receive it in Jesus name every helper of your destiny who must show up in this season to make the word of God to come to pass I command them to appear now I preached last week on the book of remembrance let me pray that prayer in the name of Jesus I open the book both in the heavens and in the earth and I declare every good thing you have done to any man on earth I compel remembrance now I compel remembrance now every kind of barrenness biological barrenness financial barrenness career barrenness ministerial barrenness I curse it now and I command it to leave you let me pray over the spirit of death any family here appointed unto death I speak by the God of heaven be free now Amen. number two every family appointed unto hardship that you will never see the goodness and the salvation of the Lord I cancel that pronouncement now listen by the blood of the eternal covenant in the name of Jesus I cause every foundational issue that causes hardship and pain and retrogression over your life now the kind of honor you have never seen in your life I speak to you by the Spirit step into it Let me pray for favor. I will never stop praying this prayer till you carry it bodily. Access to the hearts of kings. Access to the resources of kings. Receive it now by favor. Restoration of visions, dreams. Listen. There are many of you who used to have dreams and encounters. Nothing crosses over you without your eyes seeing it. But it looks like you are becoming like Eli. Your eyes becoming dim. I pray for you. I fan back your vision to flames. In the name of Jesus. Every pattern that is in any family... You see it in your siblings. You see it in your life. I declare let it be broken now. Anyone in ministry here, please hear me. I speak to you. As you return back to your various stations, let fire fall upon your altar. I pray for everyone in business. Dying business, dead business, let it come back to life now. Please, don't just say amen, believe. Creation is happening. Everything God showed you from the beginning of this year and told you should have entered your hand by now. But the devil is adding 30 extra years to your 400 years I push you by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ hear me I speak to you by the God of heaven any man that fights you goes down instantly a 
and anyone holding what is yours and has vowed not to release it in the name of Jesus may God humble the pride of wicked men anyone who has said over my dead body for this family to move may God answer their prayers I open the door of favor towards every family here in the name of Jesus all our ladies and all the women that are due to give birth I declare give birth like the Hebrew women in the name of Jesus let me pray for all the gentlemen our time is gone but I must pray for you the grace that establishes a man early may that grace rest on you for those of you who are still 30 years 35 40 50 still loitering your parents house eating your mother's food not just as honor but as a necessity in the name of Jesus by the God who is the lifter of men I declare may that reproach live your life now anyone here called barren in Jesus name by November miracle service you come here pregnant already let me pray for every ministry here every prayer group every platform intercessory groups churches fresh grace for you in the name of Jesus Christ the final prayer I'm going to pray for you honor is what makes men reward you listen 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 honor is the ability to discern the ability to celebrate and the ability to reward men for their uniqueness you can be as anointed as anything but when honor is not on you men will only just celebrate you from afar but you will never live a rewarded life i pray the prayer that Jabez cried unto God for the Bible says and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren I pray for you everywhere you find yourself rise above your contemporaries let me pray the last prayer point don't say it's not important there are people here your life is not advancing the kingdom in any way this is not altar call this prayer for you to settle down and let your life advance as far as God is concerned you are time on earth if your life does not find a space to advance the kingdom not your work not your service not your worship it looks like nothing about your life there is no kingdom come represented in your life you are just living for yourself hand to mouth to marry have children maybe go to school get a job i redirect your focus now in the name of jesus christ may your life and everything involved around it cause the kingdom the power and the glory of god to be manifest in the name of jesus and every other request here whether mentioned or not I stand in agreement with you in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God receive it as a testimony in the next one minute whether you are in overflow one two three or here you are yet to make Jesus Lord of your life genuinely please no movement and or you are saying apostle i've handed my life over to jesus but for some reason things have just scattered around my life and i don't seem to gain any footing and bearing and i want to make my way right with god please whether you are in overflow one overflow two the main auditorium aside from overflow three please i'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here right now koinonia celebrate them don't wait for anyone to come first quickly if you're coming please come and stand
come and stand apostle i'm not sure if i'm saved or not join them quickly join them quickly koinonia is this the best you can do join them quickly scripture says you must be born again if you're coming from outside please make it snappy make it as fast as possible hallelujah i salute every one of you here please lift your right hand believe that jesus is here standing before you gentlemen and ladies please join them very quickly if you're coming please come quickly 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 you're coming come very quickly thank you now say this after me say it passionately say it truthfully believing that jesus is here and he will honor your confession of faith say after me lord jesus tonight i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification tonight I ask you to be my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that from tonight and forever, I move forward ever, backward never. These three ladies didn't pray the prayer. Somebody direct them and let them pray that prayer. The prayer is already finished. You, this yellow girl, and those two, those my sisters. Osha or any of you, are you not Christians? Direct them. Someone pray the prayer with them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare right now, begin to walk in victory in Jesus' name. I introduce you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You will know him. You will walk in his ways. You will command strange results in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I call you tonight the righteousness of God. I call you that you are part of the family of heaven. In the name of Jesus. All of the people who are just coming, you're welcome. God bless you. Just join that group that they are praying with. And just pray the prayer that they lead you to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, thank you for these precious ones that you died for. I decree and declare that tonight you receive by faith the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, and I declare that you reign in life. Go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. All of you in concert, I want you to follow the lady smiling at you with her hands lifted. Everyone, please follow her. And um, they will direct you to a few people to just follow you or praise the Lord. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain